Hey, I'm gonna my seat here back again with another brand new video. So today I will be no damaging all the main ops in Peace Walker. Now this is a PSP game and they did have to scale back for better and sometimes for worse. Like, I don't know, like, for example, the areas are smaller but more focused on gameplay rather than set pieces. But the gameplay is also more simple than what's in on a previous Metal Gear Solid game like Snake Eater. And you can't crawl anymore. Well, but a positive of not being, but a positive of not being able to crawl anymore is that the areas seem more designed towards kind of speeding through them in a crouch walk. And yeah, a, a lot of the animations in this game are kind of taken from Metal Gear Solid 4. But then there's also a lot of animations which are also redone for this game in specific. And uh, I think that's really great detail of it. Like this is a game that's kind of like in between like older Metal Gear Solid, like Metal Gear Solid 1 and 2, and some newer games like 3 or 4. And I guess some of the mixed elements is that, well, you have kind of the perspective of a game like 3 or 4, well, more 4 than 3, kind of the, you know, behind the character when you shoot behind the shoulder. I'm mean, over the shoulder aiming and all that. It's more like four. Anyways, for this gate, you don't have to shoot it. You have to throw grenades at it. It's kind of like a little tutorial area before entering the next part. You know, if the tutorial, if the skippable tutorial on the beach wasn't enough, we have this. And yeah, there was a lot of cutscenes before like this first part of the game. So yeah, so just like one tutorial, and then here's like a less forced tutorial for those who are into that. And yeah, but. Like, okay, I'm getting really lost with what to say. I don't really know how to start this video off because I do have a lot of points to talk about, but I don't know. Like, they're kind of, there's a lot of spoilers in between here and there. Like, I mean, despite being a PSP game, this is a very massive experience indeed. It's probably like the longest Metal Gear game up to this point for multiple reasons. Anyways, uh, we're in this first mission, you can't really customize your loadout, so you're going to be stuck with your regular camo. And what that means is that when you run up towards an enemy, they can hear you. However, if you roll towards them, you're actually pretty silent. Just like I did right there. However, I don't proceed to roll into an enemy ever again because later on, I, there's no real need for it. Also, uh, one useful technique which you must know is that... Okay, here we go. Boom. Run up to the enemy. Knock them down. Hold them up. Now, you could walk slowly towards the enemy so that they don't look behind you and hold them up. However, uh, for speed purposes, you can kind of just run up to them, and then there'll be like a brief pause, and this is another thing. So, in Metal Gear Solid 4, the previous game, if a guard saw you, it was an instant alert. But in Peace Walker, they kind of changed it back to how it was in 3, where there's a brief period where a guard sees you, that's where the green exclamation point comes in, and then there's the moment where he's alerted, red exclamation point. I'm assuming they did this because you're playing it on PSP, and it allows you to run up to guards and... Okay, I'm assuming they did this on PSP because, well, the PSP screen is very small. And honestly, the original control setup of Peace Walker could be a little clunky to work with, especially the camera. So it's just a little accommodation. It just kind of gives you a little bit more room for error. But because you have a little bit more room for error, it allows you to pretty much run up to guards and seek you see them. Well, as long as you're not wearing the sneaking suit because then you don't make any noise with that suit. But since I'm not wearing the sneaking suit in this pretty much beginning mission, it's something to kind of watch out for. But this accommodation also existed in Snake Eater, but that was because it was a huge change up from like the previous games. You didn't have a radar to work with anymore, so you instead... And also enemies are kind of hard to see, so sometimes you had nice, that nice little brief period to work with. However, in this game, I'd say it's probably easier because the guards, the guard like sight lines aren't that far anymore. I mean, don't see as far as they did in Snake Eater, and that's kind of what I mean when I say that this game is a mix between older games and newer games. It kind of has some gameplay elements of the newer games, like mostly a lot of animations, crouch walking, being able to, like, I mean, to be fair, you could hold up guards since Metal Gear Solid 2, but that's besides the point. Kind of like that style of gameplay, but you have accommodations of, like, the previous games where, you know, guards didn't see that far. Like, on the sight lines or, like, sight cones of, like, Metal Gear Solid 1 guards are very limited. And they may be even more limited in this game. So, they kind of limited it because if they did see as far as they did in Snake Eater, it would probably turn into a very frustrating experience on the PSP. So, yeah, guards are way dumber in this game than usual. And, oh, yeah, here's the QTEs during cutscenes. Oh, my goodness, do they suck. 
But one thing which I do have to praise about them is that the sound design with the QTs is pretty well into implemented because, I don't know, usually the way they're done is that a sound will happen before the icon shows up. So there's like a, an alarming sound to kind of get you into the mindset. There it is. Boom. Oh, something's going to show up. Then you look for something. Then you look for like what button's going to show up. And then, yeah, like that. So, I mean, I'd say that's a pretty good way to implement the cutscenes, the, the QTs and cutscenes, but it's just that I hate it so much because I don't know. This game also has a new ranking system. There it is right there. So, yeah, I will be no damaging all the main ops and I will be getting S ranks on all the missions except for one in particular because the way I do no damage in a very, very particular mission does not allow me to get S rank. And I think it'll be a pretty understandable reason why once we get to that exact mission. But yeah, like, so you'll like sneak through an entire area perfectly, you know, you'll do it really fast, and then you don't know when a cutscene is going to happen with QTs, and then it happens, and you screw one up, boom, your S rank's gone. That's what's very annoying about the bloody QTs. They aren't exactly the most badly implemented, but they can get really obnoxious. They're definitely also not some of the hardest ones, though sometimes they'll ask you to do weird things like press the freaking like D-pad sometimes. Like I was not expecting that, and it threw me off, and I pressed the wrong button because of that. So it's just like, yeah, it sucks because of that. I don't like it. it it's not cool. Like, I honestly, one of the coolest implementations of, like, QTs is probably stuff like Kingdom Hearts 2 or, like, the Yakuza series. But this is... Ah, uh, come on, man. Like, come on. Like, I mean, especially when I'm replaying the game, I just kind of want to skip all the cutscenes and get with the gameplay. And not, like, have to redo all these QTE cutscenes because they can also take up a huge chunk of time. Yeah, look at this guard here. That guy did not see me whatsoever. That's what I'm talking about. They really nerfed the guards for this PSP game because, well, it was on the PSP. However, I'm not playing the PSP version. I am playing the PS3 HD port, which this game got because, well, it is a somewhat fundamental, like, substantial entry in the series. It's like, I know, Kojima considers it the Metal Gear Solid 5, even though it is just called Metal Gear Solid Peace Walker, and it is a little lower scale than Metal Gear Solid 4, though I don't know if this is exactly true, but it may have the same amount of people working for it that Metal Gear Solid 4 had for a PSP game, so it's a very, very ambitious PSP game. And, oh yeah, so here's another element of the gameplay. So, this is the hold-up game. <laughs> They simplified how it works, because in previous games, when you hold up enemies, it was a way to further interact with the enemy. Like in Metal Gear Solid 2, you kind of hold them up, then get in front of them, you know, put the gun in their face, they drop ammo, you get their dog tag. You can also kind of keep them in the hold-up state, and, like, if they, uh, if you don't, like, hold them up again, if you let them, like, by themselves for too... If you leave a guard by themselves for too long while they're in the hold-up state, they can, like, get out of it and then get alerted and, like, call the other guards to come in and, like, pretty much activate a caution state. And in Metal Gear Solid 3, you can kind of do some of the same things, but you can also set them up really easily to interrogate them. And then in Metal Gear Solid 4, they simplified it from 3, but still you can kind of do a lot of the same things you can do in, the, in like 2 and also 3. It's just that interrogations are super nerfed in 4, as in they didn't exist. And now we're in Peace Walker, where holding up an enemy immediately puts them on the ground, where they will never get up again unless you get, you get an alert. Like... Mm. I don't know, it kind of removes a lot of interactivity from the game, and I'm not, I'm, not, I'm not a big fan of it. Though I can kind of understand, like, why they did it to kind of keep a faster pace, but, like, it, it's just not as fun anymore. However, what this means is that hold-ups are pretty much the best way to do things. And, I don't know, one useful thing, I mean, I already mentioned it, you know, CQC an enemy and then hold them up while they're on the ground so you don't have to CQC them twice. Because CQCing an enemy, like, once, kind of that whole big melee throw doesn't knock them out they'll get up again and you'll have to do it twice or sometimes even three times however one thing to make sure that they don't get up after like throwing them once is to pretty much throw them and hold them up and it also works when you don't have clothing that kind of masks your footsteps like the sneaking suit i'm wearing right now so like that's just you can see you see an enemy then pull them up it's over and also another thing that works is you can like shoot a trank and then like knock them down you know if you don't get a headshot with a trank and it doesn't knock them out immediately you can instead just kind of shoot one in the body and then throw them to the ground and they'll be asleep but yeah though i should mention when i say that like holding up enemies is like the easiest way to go about things i am ignoring the tranking because like i don't know using the trank gun the pretty much a tranquilizer is still like insanely overpowered and it's even more overpowered in this game because the areas are smaller there's less enemies and also in every like new main op all your ammo is refilled so like honestly these are not big areas these are not like huge enemy like like chunks 
there's not like a lot of enemies here so you can mostly just go for headshots from like across the map and enemy sight lines are also so short that it doesn't really even matter you can kind of just get by most of these guys or kind of even get up in their face a little bit and it'll pretty much work out pretty well also i should clarify i am playing on what is practically new game plus so this game doesn't exactly have a new game plus since it has a mission structure you know after you like get a lot of like end game weapons you can just revisit those like previous missions with more end game weaponry like my sneaking suit here and the soliton radar now the soliton radar is something which i don't want to use too much but i decided to use it a little bit just for fun because hey you can unlock the soliton radar isn't that neat and that's how I was able to verify their sight lines. And as you can see there, they're pretty short. Like, they kind of have some abilities, like, uh, the Metal Gear Solid 2 guards can have, where if you, like, run in front of, like, their field of vision, but you're not in the blue section of their field of vision, they'll get suspicious. So, like, that, that thing for Metal Gear Solid 2 returns, though it's not as punishing as Metal Gear Solid 2's, like kind of caution state, where a guard will go, like, hey, what's that over there? Well, in this game, they'll do that, but it's pretty easy to get around the enemy. Like you can avoid enemies pretty easily. And I have not really been going over strategies much because this game is really simple. You just kind of, most of the time, enemies will be positioned in such a way we can just run up to them and just hold them up. Like, look at that. I'm just going to run up on this guy, hold them up, and boom, they're on the ground immediately. No, no cause, no harm, you know, whatsoever. Also, another useful thing is that the Soliton radar gives you pretty much an, an in-game map. I don't know, sometimes you, if you want to see the map, you have to open the pause menu, though to be fair, the way this game's areas are designed are never that complex that you would want to open the map ven menu, but the reason I'm doing it here is because sometimes certain areas can have like multiple exit points, and if you go by the wrong exit point, uh, you'll just end up wasting a lot of time. <laughs> like, um, you, can, you might accidentally go back to a previous area when we're actually supposed to be going up. To like the next area so i'm just double checking that since i can and also another thing which new game plus gives you is this banana now the banana is completely pointless and it's pretty much just a joke weapon but since i don't want to play this game by tranking everyone because i mean in some of the previous games that could be a little more understandable but in this one it would just be overkill most of the time i only really want to trank when i need to trank so instead i'm just going to hold up everyone which is pretty much like i guess the second most overpowered thing you can do aside from killing but in this game, there's a lot of things which de-emphasize killing. I will uh, get into that later. But yeah, it's pretty much just run up, hold the guard, and just kind of go from that. I don't know, sometimes a guard will be in your face, which comes up, which then the next most useful tool in the game pops up, the smoke grenade. Now, whether you unlock the smoke grenade early on, or if this is like kind of a mid-game weapon, I don't really remember. But I have it now, so I'm going to use it now. And pretty much if a guard's in your way, instead of waiting, you can just kind of throw a smoke grenade at them. And then most of the time, it's pretty much good enough to just run into that smoke grenade, throw them to the ground, and hold them up. Because you can't exactly hold them up while they're still coughing smoke. So instead, you interrupt them by pretty much knocking them to the ground, and then you hold them up there. So, I mean, a, a problem I had with Metal Gear Solid 4 was that if you smoke a guard, you can't really do anything to that guard aside from, like, shooting them with tranks, maybe. You can't see you see the guard because you'll also be coughing from the smoke. However, in Peace Walker, that is not an issue. There's ways to actually interact with the enemy when they get smoked. So, yeah, I really appreciate that. So, yeah, here I'm just kind of slowly going through here. And also, I'm really only holding up weapons. I'm really only, only holding up guards. I'm not trying to get any guards because, frankly, at this point in the game, I don't need any more guards. Though, that some of the later main ops, I actually had to grind a bit to get some new weaponry because I thought, like, no damage would be kind of impossible or at least very, very grueling if I didn't have certain, like, high-level weaponry. And, well, that's a whole other issue of this game, which I will get into later. I should also mention, uh... Since this game is mostly very easy, aside from like one or two like grueling moments, uh, I did not really have to follow any YouTube like walkthroughs or whatever. Like I, did, I really did not pay attention to like any other YouTube videos. I just kind of went with my own flow, and yeah, it was very nice. But this game really is very easy. Oh, aside from maybe some boss fights, I had to like watch a few no damages of these boss fights. But the one person I really wanted to mention, who I think is like really important to mention, is Sappy Joker Gaming who I believe they are the only person who has uploaded a video of like the final secret boss fight, no damage. I have not seen a single other video which has no damage, like the final secret boss fight. Like they, I believe they are the only person who has done it and they only have 24 subs. Go sub to them because like without that video, I, I honestly would have like tried to not no damage Zeke maybe. But since it is possible, like I actually gave it a shot and it really was not that hard. Well, I mean, especially coming at it from like 
with all my new weaponry and all that. And also because it's like main op Zeke. And well, there's also like different versions of the boss fights and there's extra ops, which are even harder and have more health. And that's a whole other topic I'll get into later. But yeah, shout out to that YouTuber. Very, very useful information to have. Now for this tank boss fight. So this is kind of like the first boss fight of the game, but it's more of a mid boss. Cause it's not really like a boss fight, like I don't know, some other encounters would be. But, I mean, it has a health bar like the other boss fight, so it might as well be a boss fight, but it's not really a boss fight per se. You get me? It's more like a mid-boss. So pretty much the strategy is kind of run up to where I was there, and I checked with Assault, and the, the guards really do not have long sight lines. And they're always going to spawn outside of this tank, so pretty much kind of run up all the way there, and then wait for the guards to kind of, you know, be in their normal guarding position or whatever, just kind of following the tank, and then get behind them and hold up all of them, and then full taunt eat like Fulton and recovery each one of the guards out of there to pretty much get rid of them because if you don't Fulton and recovery then they'll wake up so pretty much your options are Fulton and recovery every soldier that pops up here or kill all of them and you'd rather Fulton and recovery them because killing them is just a whole bigger hassle and then the tank will notice and then your kind of little stealth run here will be ruined so yeah and then pretty much once you Fulton like the first four dudes just kind of stay behind the tank and wait for them for, to like spawn more dudes so then just throw a bunch of smoke grenades in front of the dudes and then Fulton and recovery them too using the CQC stuff and then once you take out like a, a certain checklist of like enemies because I don't know each different tank boss fight has like a certain checklist of enemies you have to take out and then once you take out like that checklist of enemies like on a 4, 8, 12 then the captain pops up which allows you to like non-lethally trank him in the head though I don't know like, I mean, I, I get pretty lucky here because he just stops randomly and I get a good headshot and I'm able to land more headshots after that. But you're not always going to get this chance. And one way to kind of, like, make this chance happen is to bring a machine gun to pretty much, like, shoot out these gas tanks. Shooting out the gas tanks puts the, puts the tank, like, in a standstill so that the guard doesn't move or really do anything. And then you'll have an easier time getting a shot in. I just got really lucky with this one. And that's how you handle this tank boss fight, though. That's not going to work for all the tank boss fights, especially when, like, the number of soldiers who keep spawning gets higher and higher. Though, to be fair, there's only one more tank boss fight in, like, the main ops. I'm mostly talking about the extra ops, and that's a whole other issue I will get into later. But, yeah. I don't know. I mean, if you, as long as you know what to do, or at least have the plan to pretty much like, kind of approach the tank from behind and pretty much Fulton all the soldiers out of there and also like know how many soldiers are going to pop out of the tank then this boss fight, sh then the little tank boss fight shouldn't be that hard. Now, this game not only has QTEs during cutscene cutscenes, it also has these little interactive moments and these aren't too bad but some of the other ones can be a little bit annoying but some of these things are nice. It's just too bad that they're unskippable and also whenever you try to skip them there's like that little annoying like noise that happens a little dun, 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 like bro i want to skip it don't tell me that noise come on man come on but yeah i don't know when i say that this game is mostly easy aside from a few moments i'm talking about main ops 24 and some boss fights and yeah also a new addition to this game is the mission structure though I don't know, like portable ops also kind of had the mission structure, but it also kind of also, but it also fit the model of previous Metal Gear Solid games because like the ranking system would rank you for how you beat the entire game, not how you beat each mission. So it didn't really emphasize the mission structure. You just kind of went from area to area. While this game has more of a mission structure and it's really quite genius because it doesn't really lose much of anything from the previous game structures, but it gains a lot with it. I don't know, because within the main ops, there is a normal Metal Gear Solid game inside, just like the previous entries. You could combine main ops like 1 through 26 into one continuous game, and you would have something like the previous entries. But then there's all the extra ops and the mother base stuff, plus the post-game main ops, which add a lot more longevity to the game, which I appreciate a lot because I have because I haven't lost that tight linear Metal Gear Solid campaign, but I also have a lot more to play with when I'm done with it. Though it's not all good, some of the ways the game increases longevity become immensely irksome in the post game. Like, I'm, I'm gonna mention some of those things later on. And also another point is that I believe a lot of the animations are indeed taken from Metal Gear Solid 4. And a lot has been reworked in particular in this game to make it a more smooth experience than Portable Ops, which is basically a bunch of Snake Eater assets like slammed into a PSP. Like, I still miss crawling, but for what Peace Walker is going for, this works better. And yeah, 
I was gonna mention something else. I mean, in this area, pretty much, I'm actually gonna trank a guard because, like, I don't know, there's one guard who's sniping the area. You can't really reach him, so you have to trank him. And that's kind of one annoying part of, like, I don't know, Peace Walker's design is that sometimes, like, some of these stealth challenges have a pretty one-way solution to them. Like, how else are you gonna deal with the guy sniping up ahead which you can't reach whatsoever? Because, I don't know, I feel like if a guy like that was introduced in Snake Eater, there'd be, like, a way to get on top of the building where the sniper is and like hold them up there while here you pretty much either avoid his sight line or you trank him and that's pretty much as far as it goes and i guess that's kind of one issue i have with the simplification of like peace walkers combat because you know like i mean it's great that this game is more gameplay focused now like all right we don't have to deal with like so many annoying set pieces because like some of the games can definitely get annoying with that especially in their second halves so for peace walker to kind of be more okay we're gonna do more sneaking this time that's cool but the sneaking present isn't as interesting as some of the previous games like snake eater or maybe even guns of the patriots when it actually wanted to be about sneaking when it wasn't like so focused in like set piece stuff because I don't know, just like in Snake Eater, there were so many different ways to interact with guards and also the environment could play into it. You could get like an animal and use that as a distraction weapon. While here, it's just kind of like, I mean, you can hold up guards and you can kind of do it in a kind of speed run fashion. And it's kind of just, that's it. Yeah. I mean, like, I mean, to be fair, this game is still fun. There's still a lot of nice little intricacies. I mean, even the hold up stuff is like interesting, but it's just not as interesting as previous games. And to be fair, I don't know, like, asking a PSP game to do what a PS2 game did might be asking a bit too much. In a lot of ways, this game is doing more than, like, the PS2 game. But, yeah. Like, I don't know. There's, like, an in-between between Portable Ops and Peace Walker, which I feel will make, like, a perfect Metal Gear Solid game on a PSP or whatever. But, like, the two extremes I don't think are really that beneficial. So, yeah, in this mission, you have to, like, go into blue doors and kind of check where Chico is. And that's where Chico is. So uh, you don't really have to waste time with the other doors, but I didn't really know where the other door, where like Chico actually was. So I was just kind of experimenting, and thankfully on the second door I checked, that was indeed the one where Chico was. The train terminal is on the other so, side of yeah. the coffee factory. Head for the factory first. Freeze. To get to the coffee factory, you'll first need to backtrack to the fork in the road. Like, I mean, the sneaking in Peace Walker, I don't really like it as much as the slower pace of Snake Eater, but speedrunning through areas and learning how to hold up most of the guards or breeze through the others is fun and easy to replay. But yeah, like, the Trank Gun is still probably, is still way too overpowered, and it's probably the most overpowered in this game. I mean, like, Metal Gear Solid 4's, like, Trank Gun is probably the most overpowered because it takes out enemies, like, in the fastest time possible. Like, I don't know, if you shoot a Trank Guard into a guard... In like Metal Gear Solid 4, they're going to pass out super fast. While here, they don't pass out that fast unless you get a headshot on them. Or if you like shoot them in the nuts. But like the thing which makes it overpowered in this game is that the areas are so small. And like the enemy sightlines are so short that you just kind of point and click. And it pretty much solves itself. Also, I mean, you've probably noticed it by now. But like this game's choice to have comic cutscenes instead of its in-game models was honestly a pretty smart choice indeed. And would have helped it. And, and no, not would have. It has helped it age better than it would have if it tried to be fully cinematic like Snake Eater or Guns of the Patriots. Like, I don't like it as much as the previous style, but it's still pretty awesome. It isn't the first to adopt Ashley Wood's comic style, though. Portable Ops did it first, and later on the Kuruhio games from the Yakuza series would put it to great use as well. When it comes to the PSP games that use Ash Ashley Wood's comic style, though, Peace Walker probably has the most dynamic cutscenes on a moment-to-moment -moment basis, as Portable Ops can be rather rough a lot of the time, and Kuruhio cutscenes can kind of turn into lengthy conversations where the mostly same faces just talk to each other. But my favorite, like, on implementation of Ashley Wood-type cutscenes is still with the Kuruhio games, despite all that. It has my favorite art style out of all of them. And it, when it does want to be dynamic, it has an amazing energy to it. Basically, what I'm trying to say is that you need to play the Kuruhio games, and Sega needs to localize and port them ASAP. No, I do not want a remake, because then they'll get rid of those cutscenes. And those cutscenes are so integral to the vibe of that game. So, yeah. As you can see here, uh, pretty much there's going to be one guard overlooking you, so I'm going to take him out. And then the second guard that's overlooking the area, I'm going to not take out, because you can kind of just run past them without them noticing you. So pretty much the way you get like to the end point of this level is to climb up, but I'm just going to 
run up here. Pretty much hold this guy up. You, you run really fast in this area and then pretty much get the drop on this guy. And that's the thing. Pretty much running fast in this game is pretty much how you get the drop on most of these guys. And also, there are prisoners you can rescue. I'm not gonna make it a pretty, I'm not gonna make it a, a priority to rescue every single prisoner in every single area. I'm more just playing the game normally. I don't mean future because this game really doesn't emphasize extra objectives. I mean the prisoners are there, you can rescue them, it's cool, but it's not really a required extra objective you have to take. I don't know, future Metal Gear Solid games will start adding extra objectives which add a lot more longevity to their missions. But Peace Walker is more about the main objective, pretty much getting from one point of the map to the other. And that's pretty much it. So yeah. I mean, it's so yeah, like I'm, it's fun to kind of speed run through these things. And the prisoners are kind of a nice little touch to Fultoning everyone. And in the beginning of the game, you don't really have that many Fultons to work with. So sometimes you can't Fulton every single enemy in the area. You kind of have to decide who you want and why you want them, though, to be fair. I think in the very beginning of the game, you also don't have an analyzer to work with. So you don't exactly know which guard is good and which guard is bad, but, you know, you, you have to decide. Anyways, at the end of this level, we have a little bit of a mix-up. I don't know, sometimes in this game, when you reach the end of a level, that's the end of the level. But here, we're going to end off in a little bit of a climactic kind of stealth, like, combat encounter of sorts, where you have to pretty much take down all these guards. And one version of taking them down is just by holding them all up, which is what I'm going to do. So yeah, I'm going to throw a smoke grenade here. I'm going to hold up these guys. And look at the sight lines here how did that guy not see me but yeah that guy did not see me they're gonna hide out here so i can start throwing more smoke grenades indeed i'm gonna throw one over there and i'm gonna throw one where the these two enemies are and we're pretty much done here and i'm gonna make a bit of a mistake it's where pretty much i hold up everyone up i pretty much hold everyone up and i succeed in my task but then for some reason like the game kind of just stands there paused waiting for me to fault in everyone and me being the very uh, intelligent man that I am, I did not fault in anyone. <laughs> like, I don't know, this game, like, uh, during these combat encounters, kind of has these brief pauses, which it gives you to fault in more people. And that's a pretty smart design choice, though. Sometimes I don't take advantage of it. This also happens in, like, the actual combat encounters, where every enemy is, like, on full alert. I'll get to those when I get to those, because this game has some very memorable ones. Maybe not exactly amazing ones, but does have very memorable ones. And there we go. I fault in that guy, and then it, the cutscene stops, and we pretty much ended up this ended its main op but yeah i don't know pretty much i think the deciding factor on whether you get that s rank at the end of these main ops is speed i mean to be fair if you get caught i'm pretty sure your s rank is over and if you fail any cutscene interactions then your your s rank is also over and if you kill anyone i'm pretty sure your s rank is indeed also over but it's mostly speed i believe like look at that clear time very fast s rank let's go Oh, yeah, also, when it comes to things which has been reworked in this game, CQC has also been reworked. I don't know, like, I mean, the way the slams work now are really satisfying. I mean, it was really satisfying in 3, but in 4, it was kind of nerfed. You kind of just throw them like a little pillow. While here, the impact is back. And also, uh, they added a new thing where if you slam one enemy, you can, like, right next to another enemy, you can also chain slam that other enemy. So you can more easily knock out six guys all at once, and yes, that will happen in this video. It's a really great idea. And before I continue talking about this, I should probably talk about the strategy to this fight. So this one's a little, this one's more challenging than the previous tank fight. Because in the previous tank fight, the soldiers just kind of spawn conveniently out of the tank. While here, they'll just, like, you'll hear a smoke grenade go off and they'll spawn from a random side of the map. Like, encounters like these, uh, it's really helpful to have the Soliton Radar. Or the Soliton Radar is a pretty endgame weapon, so this is really only mostly good for replays. Though, if you don't have the Soliton Radar, you can kind of just look around, see where the enemy's coming from, and then run away from that position while also making sure that this tank doesn't see you. But, oh yeah, sometimes when you're holding up guards and trying to, like, fault and extract them, the tank will just run over them and kill them. It won't count as your kill because you didn't kill them. Yeah, there we go. There it is. They're going to spawn from some place. You have to be careful that you're not too close to their sight lines. And now uh, there's a bit of randomness involved here because sometimes you might run and the guard, you might be straight in front of a guard. You just never know. And sometimes they'll spawn in by twos or sometimes they'll spawn in by threes. You don't know. So uh, here I kind of went and took out these two guards here, but then I'm in danger of getting caught by the other guards who just got spawned. And also, I have to change my items. And they're... Okay, so the way you change items in this game can work when you're just kind of sneaking around, but during stressful situations, oh my goodness. Though, I'm pretty sure there's a way to map it that you can kind of quick switch between items, but I was too lazy to do that. I mean, in the previous games, I didn't need to do that, because every time I opened up my inventory in the previous games, it, there would be... They would, like, pause in-game. But here, there are no pauses. 
and that's another thing when you're like when you pause to like skip cutscenes there's no pause which i kind of miss because you know usually if i'm trying to pause a, a cutscene i want to actually pause it but in this game the cutscene keeps going so it's really only there to skip it just kind of like bro come on which i sure is a an accommodation for like the co-op play this game has also this game has co-op play so you could play like the sneaking missions with two people so you can bring a friend to help you sneak and for these boss fights you can bring four people because these boss fights tend to have a lot of health, so four people allow you to take it down faster. But, you know, that's another issue I have, which I'll get into later. But for right now, it doesn't really matter. You can kind of just avoid the entire boss fight phase by doing it really sneakily and waiting for the captain to show up. Because once the captain shows up, you can just trank him, and then boom, you take the tank unharmed for your base. There we go! And to be fair, and, oh yeah, make sure the captain doesn't notice you first, because if he notices you, then he starts shooting. And now I actually brought a machine gun to take down the gas tank. And yeah, to no damage it, you do not want that machine gun fire to hit you. Like, that's the thing. Like, pretty much the way to avoid, like, taking damage is to pretty much either sneak the entire fight or just avoid the machine gun fire all the time. I swear, the machine gun fire is probably, like, the hardest thing to avoid in this game when it comes to all the boss fights. Because it, it, I swear, a lot of times it just kind of targets you or sometimes the boss fight will be moving in such a way that it will get a little too close to you and then the machine gun fire will kind of curve on you. Just very, very annoying stuff, so... Pretty much the way you avoid it is just try to avoid it, though that is not always a possibility. Alright, so back to talking about CQC. So, the one thing I don't like about the way they reinvented the CQC is that when you put a guard into a chokehold, you can't move. All you can do is choose the direction which you're going to throw him, which is a shame. Also, you can't move bodies anymore, which is always a big shame when a stealth game removes your ability to do so when the previous games allowed you to do so. I'm looking at you, Splinter Cell Conviction. But like in a game like this, like in Peace Walker, which is so small scale, I can kind of understand. But guards can still notice bodies and wake them up, so I still want to move them, dog. Like, let me move bodies. Come on, man. Here I adopt a really goofy ass strategy. <laughs> so yeah, pretty much run, hold up the guard there, and then when you like get to that part, kind of wait for that guard to kind of be near the stairs, then roll down. Ideally, you should roll on top of the guard, but I timed it too early, so instead I was right in front of the guard, which activated like his green exclamation mark, and then I was able to kind of seek you see him and then hold him up. Thing is, if you do it too early, like even earlier than I did, you'll like immediately go into the red exclamation mark. I don't know why I was able to activate the green exclamation mark. That was just kind of strange. I guess it was because I was really close to him. So it shocked him a little bit. But if you're too far from him, but also in his sight lines, it'll be a red exclamation mark. So yeah, you're, you're better off timing it that you just jump on top of him, which does knock him out. It does not kill him. So yeah, I tranked the one guard, which is overlooking ahead, like above me, because I can't get above that thing. And here, I guess I'm going to wait for this guard to kind of get near me. I think I'm actually going to rush it that I run straight into the guard. And thing is, even if you get a red exclamation mark, point if you like run up and like seek you see him fast enough you can actually avoid an alert phase even if you have a red exclamation point this is also true of like the previous games except for maybe four i swear four probably has look at that the guard i was right in front of him the guard did not even see me that is insane my guy but yeah i swear i think four probably has like the fastest guard reactions though two still overall still has the hardest guards to deal with but like i swear like if if a guard is like alerted in four that's immediate like alert phase there is no pause while in two i was able to very quickly like like you know kind of even if a guard got alerted i was able to take him out quickly though it was kind of very planned methodical strategies which i applied that in because like normally you wouldn't be able to deal with that but there is a slight pause where you can kind of get in on a guard oh yeah that's another thing yeah in metal gear solid 2 like a guard would have to call in support before an alert phase happens so that's probably why it was more challenging there but that's probably why it was a little there was like a little pause to work with there but like the other thing is that i was able to like take out guards before they shot me when they were on an alert phase so the kind of there was a very specific moment in my metal gear solid 2 walkthrough i was able to do that so yeah here i kind of threw a smoke grenade and i was able to Pretty much deal with that though I, I don't know why i caused the caution state i i think it's either because a guard noticed a certain body i held up or it was because of that smoke grenade and now when so yeah for this mission you're gonna need c4 and in, and if you're playing this game like on a new game you would actually have to spend a little time grinding to get like the r d team up to snuff because you need the r d team at a certain level to develop c4 
which is kind of a neat little thing. But yeah, once you blow up the C4, it's gonna cause a caution state, but you can kind of just wait it out in, the, in like a little cardboard box, the love box. Now, I did not want to experiment if like the guard sight lines were poor enough that I could just stand in that corner and they wouldn't see me. So instead, I'm gonna use the box so that they don't see me. So yeah, this game probably has like the most versatile boxes in the series. However, it's also one of the easiest games in the series to just run through, so I barely use the box. But there is that one useful time to use the box. So yeah, very, very nice. I think like the thing which makes the whole removal of removing bo of, like moving bodies like like kind of stick harder is that you could do it in portable ops, which is also on the PSP. So dog, what's going on here, man? Let me move bodies. So yeah, for this bridge part, you just kind of wait for that guard to turn around there, and you'll be pretty good. And then you can kind of just wait for this guard to kind of pass by on the stairs. The two guards over there by the end, if you're fast, they won't really matter much. Yeah, wait for the guard to kind of be out of your sight, then move up, and then you can kind of hold them up and pretty much move on with this bridge area. Nothing too hard. But yeah, let me get into another conversation about Peace Walker. And that is the non-lethal versus lethal play style and how the series has found interesting ways to encourage non-lethal play through its gameplay systems and also how it plays into the thematic nature of the Metal Gear Solid game. So I mean, I'm going to ignore the first two Metal Gear games because I still haven't no damaged those yet. But yeah, you can only kill in like the first Metal Gear Solid on PS1 and that does play well into like its story and twists. In Metal Gear Solid 2, you're also shown the option to trank enemies in the beginning, because like in the tanker section, Snake could only really tank, like trank enemies. Oh yeah, for this part, just kind of get around that enemy and then hold them up, and there'll be another enemy coming up. So if you're really fast, you can kind of hold up all three of those enemies at once, and that's pretty much the entire area. There's no one else here, and you're pretty much good there. Okay, back to what I was talking about, though. So yeah, but like in Metal Gear Solid 2, like in the tanker section, you only have the Trank pistol to work with. You don't have an actual pistol, so that already shows you like, you know, a non-lethal option. And once you have like an actual pistol to work with, you still have like that non-lethal option in the back of your head. So that's one way to encourage non-lethal play. And also it plays thematically into the story because Snake's trying to escape his past. He doesn't want to be a killer who enjoys killing, who enjoys all the killing. And it also kind of plays into Raiden's story as well but even though his circumstances are different. I'll get into the other games, but right now the strategy here is that there are two guards over overlooking this area, so instead of just running through it as fast as you can, I'm instead gonna wait this out. That was a mistake, I did not want that guard to see me, so pretty much what you're gonna do is pretty much hold up that one guard, run to this area, and then wait for like the guard right in front of here to pretty much turn around so you can climb up to, so you can climb up the stairs. And once you climb up the stairs, it shouldn't be too bad. You're in a pretty safe you start off in a pretty safe area. So I don't really think there's a possibility that an enemy's gonna catch sight of you once you climb up the stairs as long as you were able to sneak up there. But yeah, I'm just kinda waiting them out. You can kinda speed things up with smoke grenades, but that kinda adds a little bit too much complication, so I'm just not gonna do it. Better off waiting here. And yeah. Like, for the most part, you shouldn't have to deal with enemies looking at you. And there's going to be one guy over looking here, and sometimes he'll look over there. And how did that guy not have a green alert marker? I have zero idea. But, yeah. And then you can just very easily hold these guys up. Very nice, very nice. And I forget if there's a guard down there. I don't think there is. Like, I don't know. Certain, like, extra ops or, like, future missions would, like, rework the way enemy placements work. And they would put an enemy down here. So it makes me a little unsure. But, yeah, for this main op, that shouldn't be too bad. There's just one guard in front of you. And then, the, like, the three guards, like, up in the little tower thing. And then this entire area is free. So here is uh, something you do not want to me mess up you have to choose the exact right truck the first time or you don't get all the cutscene interactions which means you won't get the s rank like you can, there's like 10 points of cutscene interaction you can get and i don't know how they're like qualified but if you get 10 out of 10 you're bound to get an s rank as long as you're very fast with everything else so yeah it's like six four seven seven nine choose that one first and you will have 10 out of 10 cutscene interaction Thing is, this really the sucks though, because checking off. all the other trucks have really funny jokes. Like, you'll come across some Metal Gears and be like, Metal. Metal. Metal Gear. Uh, fuck, how do you do it? How do you do a David Hader voice? Colonel. Uh, Metal Gear. Metal. Metal Gear. Metal Gear. So, yeah, he'll come across some Metal Gears and say that. Very funny. Hee <laughs> hee. And some other meta jokes. You know, very nice. Very nice. I like it. But if you do that, you don't get S rank, so I can't show it to you. But yeah, back to the whole non-lethal versus lethal thing. So yeah, like in Metal Gear Solid 3... Oh, never mind, boss fight, boss fight. So, 
The only way I was able to no damage this boss fight is that because I am super overpowered with end game weapons fighting pretty much the first boss fight in the game. So like this first boss fight's health is not accommodated. It's not like modified to deal with these like end game weapons. So pretty much the way to deal the most damage is pretty much shoot the big pod there. So yeah, look at all that health I can deal. That is not health you're gonna deal on the first time playthrough. So yeah, when you shoot the electric, so pretty much just kind of take cover near this area. You should kind of deal with most of everything this thing throws at you. Though sometimes you can kind of get bad luck and it'll be straight in front of you, which means the machine gun fire will shoot you. And yeah, look at that. We're pretty much about to end this fight, like almost right now. Yeah. Also watch out when it's kind of running in circles. Sometimes the machine gun fire can hit you. And yeah, whenever this thing like puts itself like straight in your face you don't really have much cover to work with and yeah here the fight's over like it would be a much more complicated fight if i was like fighting it for like the first time on a new game and also i think it would be a fight that would be impossible to no damage because the thing is with this game is i have not seen a single video of people no damaging these boss fights normally new game plus nothing so I thought there was just something inherently impossible about them, but on New Game Plus, they're not they're nowhere near impossible. They're very easy. For the most part. Some fights still kinda of put up a bit of a fight even on new on New Game Plus, but for these first beginning ones, no. <laughs> but no one has done it. Every S rank video I've seen of these missions, no one has no damaged them. Or at least those type of videos don't show up. Like, well, the <laughs> Like, okay, I'm trying to look it up in my outline here. Like, for example, the Sappy Joker gaming videos. I looked up, like, you know, Final Boss Fight, Peace Walker, No Damage videos. Nothing showed up. His video did not show up, even though he has done it. So it's like those videos get hidden or don't become popular. And the only popular videos are the ones which are S rank, but they take a chunk load of damage just because they're only going for speed. So it's like, I thought it was impossible because if no one else has done it, then it must be, right? But it really is not whatsoever. Hell, it may even be possible to no damage these fights on a new game, but I'm not going to be the one to test that. If someone has done this, like, I don't know, let me know, because I have not found anyone who has done that. Like, all the boss fights? No. Like, now I am the one who has done it. Because <laughs> I, I, the spoiler alert, I have no damage every single boss fight in this game. Not a single one escapes me. So, yeah, that's very, very nice. So that's something to look forward to for the rest of this video. But yeah, Sappy Joker J Gaming, big shout out because he did actually no damage the Seek fight. But yeah, back to non lethal versus lethal. So, in Metal Gear Solid 3, non lethal play is made more rewarding because the game's toolset is like a little bit more expansive and more fun to play around with, and each boss fight which you take down non lethally gives you tools to better approach the game non-lethally like this is a good step forward though it isn't going to convince all players and Metal Gear Solid 4 kind of takes a step back from 3 and makes lethal play easier than ever before but with its new camera and the billion of different guns you can buy oh yeah no so yeah Metal Gear Solid 4 takes a step back from 3 and kind of makes lethal play easier than ever before with its new camera and the billions of different guns you can buy. But that kind of fits the dystopian war economy ruled world of that game, but it's still sad to see non-lethal play take a back, a back seat from 3. Okay, before I continue talking, uh, so this area is kind of like the final section of like Snake Eater's escort mission, but it's a little bit more restrictive. It's not as fluid as that section. There's going to be a bunch of enemies posted. But as long as you avoid their sight lines and like hold them up, you can pretty much avoid the entire conflict. I mean, to be fair, if you're just running through the area without knowing this, then you know it's gonna be like a little hard. But it's not really that hard. I mean, take it slow. You can see these enemies pretty pretty easily. Like, oh, there's that one guy there. Oh, there's that one guy there. And that's pretty much this entire sneaking section. I'd say it's honestly one of the more dull sections of the game. Though I think at one point they introduced snipers, which adds a little bit of a new challenge. Though that might be the next area, I'm, uh, I'm forgetting. Because, like, these enemies are completely stationary. I don't know if they're affected by sound. I mean, I'm playing I'm playing with a sneaking suit, so I might as well have myself to blame for that. Like, look at that. Just stay to the right of the area and you just avoid everyone. <laughs> like, no, no, no real big challenge, not much of anything else. It's just like, you know, whatever. Okay. Now, I'm forgetting if... No, this is not the part where they introduce a sniper. This is just another boss fight. <laughs> so, yeah. Portable Ops, I haven't no damaged that one yet, so I honestly don't know how non-lethal play or lethal play works in that game, and I don't really know how to compare it to the story in that game. You know, whatever, whatever. But now that we're... 
I mean, okay, but Portable Ops does introduce some things which Peace Walker introduces, which I'm gonna gush about in Peace Walker. But before I take about, before I talk about that, here is the helicopter boss fight. So pretty much start the fight off, throw some smoke grenades over there at the enemies. You know, make sure you can like, they're all smoke smoked. And then we're gonna knock all of them out and fault them. Now the strategy here is like a bit different from the tank ones, though maybe it's not as hard as the second tank fight. So yeah, knock everyone out, fault in them, fault in all of them, and hope that the heli the little helicopter doesn't notice you. I honestly don't know how you avoid the helicopter. Like pretty much the way I do it is just by standing in one like location, the tree right here, and like as long as you stand here and wait out the next like enemy spawn, you should be fine. And pretty much the way the enemy spawns are either in that area or on the right side of the area. Yeah, look there. Uh, I get very lucky because, I don't know, this guy just deploys the units very fast. So yeah, throw one smoke grenade, wait for the third guy to go down, fourth, then throw another one. Pretty much, like, only waste two smoke grenades because you're going to need a lot of smoke grenades for these encounters. If you use, like, three, you're going to run out too fast for, like, the last couple of group of enemies. And then do this sick-ass QTE thing where you just chain, like, slam a bunch of guys. And then you fault them all of them. And that's how you do that. And then you pretty much go back to the tree to hide, and you kind of go from there. So as long as the... The helicopter keeps spawning enemies like in this area, you'll be fine. But if he goes to the right, it gets a little challenging. You kind of have to hurry up and run over there. Also, uh, there are two like items you can get in this area. Like you're not gonna have enough Fultons to like Fulton recovery things to like get everyone, but there are like two like extra balloons around this area. There's kind of one like near the left side here, and then there's one near the middle of the area. So, like at a certain point, you're gonna have to pick those up so that you can actually Fulton everyone in order to get like the captain to show up so i believe that after i get after i fault in these guys i'm gonna pick up the one on the left oh sometimes if you approach this helicopter too fast like the wind from the helicopter is going to keep you paused in place and like that can kind of screw you over if you like uh didn't smoke these enemies so you know that's just one thing to watch out for so here i kind of messed up my qte slams but thankfully i was able to kind of fix my mistake pretty easily with all the smoke giving me cover and stuff. So yeah, the extra Fulton thing, I bl oh, I'm not gonna get it? Hey, 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 I'm, uh, hey, dog. I guess I just forgot to get the one on the left. I'm gonna get the one in the middle here. There, boom, he has some extra balloons to work with. And then later on, I'll pick up the ones on the left to get extra balloons to work with there as well. And that's pretty much this entire fight. The only real complication is, well, the right side when this helicopter starts spawning enemies on the right side. And also, I, it's really weird that he's spawning enemies this fast. This helicopter usually takes a longer time to spawn new enemies, but I, I'm just lucky. This is a really fast attempt. But yeah, I don't know. Sometimes the helicopter will spend more, like will waste more time flying around, but here he's pretty on on business here, which makes this fight easier. I like that a lot. And here I messed up, but I kind of rectified my mistake by holding up the guard this time. Very smart. Very nice. That's pretty much this entire fight. I honestly forget how many enemies you have to take out. But I'm pretty sure, like, if you see my video, you can kind of count it. <laughs> like, I don't know, like, each of these boss fights has a different amount of enemies you have to take out. It's definitely a lot more than uh, the amount of enemies you have to take out with the tanks. But, you know, with the extra Fultons in the, around the area, which you can pick up, it should be, shouldn't be too bad. Though, don't get spotted by the helicopter that shows up. Oh, wait, wait, 4 times 5 is 20. I believe it's 20 guards you have to Fulton out of here, and then the captain shows up. Why? Because I've been using two smoke grenades for every, like, like every time it, like, guards respawn, pretty much. So now I'm on my last two, and on these last two, it's pretty much the last group of guards we have to get. So, yeah, that's very, very nice indeed. So yeah, this is the one time where they spawn on the right, so I'm a little late in getting over there. Like, I know there's a few, like, telling signs that he's gonna drop down and, like, spawn some guards. So you should probably get a little hurry on before they do that. Because if you're not fast enough, then guards can kind of run a little too far away from their spawn point. Now you have moments like this, where this guard's all the way over here. Though, thankfully, the guards over there, I believe, are gonna stay there, because smoke grenades tend to last for a long time. But now, I need to mention two other YouTubers, which were important, mostly because they showed me how to no damage to tank and helicopter fight so taz one one i don't know it's spelled like you know taz t-a-z one as in the word one you know o n e and then one as in the number taz one one showed me how to no damage the tanks and darkness fox showed me how to no damage the helicopter here though i don't believe he actually no damages the helicopter in his take 
but I pretty much I pretty much just took his strategy and modified it so I can no damage this part right here. He took damage when he was I believe when he was trying to like trank this guard here because you pretty much have to make the guard notice you. And now here is something which I have seen no one use: the bloody shield. Because <laughs> I mean, a lot of the issues with take like taking damage in this game come from the shield. No, come from machine gun fire. And you know what blocks machine gun fire? The shield. So here is the shield. The thing is, you can't exactly use the shield if you're using a weapon that requires more than like one hand to use. So like on the rocket launchers and the big like big big boss fights, you can't exactly take advantage of the shield because you're gonna be using the rocket launcher. So yeah, me, I do take advantage of the shield for this. So I pretty much just kind of have the shield. I have the trank gun, and I mean. It, the shield does not block rockets though, so when it starts shooting rockets, get out of the way, kind of run to a different location. But for the machine gun fire, it should be fine. And honestly, like with the way I was positioned, like the rocks block the machine gun fire, not the shield. But the shield is a precaution. So yeah, I mean, you want, you kind of want to trank the guard before he notices you. But for this helicopter, it's a little that's asking a little too much. So the shield is a good thing to have. So yeah, I just need to shout out those YouTubers. And those are pretty much all the YouTubers I saw. Like, I mean, I saw a bit of center strains, like, footage just to get, like, help. But the only help I got was that, okay, I'm going to have to adopt my own strategy for that section. <laughs> Though I'll mention center strain because I've mentioned it before in my Splinter Cell videos. And he, his channel is very useful. He's done a great variety of stealth games. So definitely a great resource if you want to watch some, like, good stealth gameplay there. So yeah, let me get back to talking about non-lethal. Versus lethal. I've been trying to drag out this topic, but I keep getting interrupted because I want to talk about gameplay strategies. But to be fair, talking about gameplay strategies is a good part of these videos, I say. So yeah, back to the non-lethal versus lethal thing. Uh, I don't know. I got, I'm a little lost in my outline. It's a lot. So yeah, the way Peace Walker does it. Um, okay, the way Peace Walker does it. So yeah. Oh, here's where they introduce the snipers. So pretty much the way you handle the snipers, kind of throw some smoke grenades in front of them, and then you can kind of run up to them. And also have night vision, so you can actually spot the snipers easier. I mean, if you know where they are, you can kind of get by them, but I, I'm just not going to risk it. So yeah, night vision, let's go. So yeah, night vision in this game, it pretty much just highlights all the enemies, so it makes it a lot easier for this. So yeah, once you see the sniper, kind of hold up that sniper there. And there is a second sniper right there. I'm going to hold them up as well. Though to be fair, th there's a point where holding up snipers is really important, though I don't know if this is that point exactly. No, 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 it's not. Because there's a mission we have to go back and forth. So if you hold... I'll talk about it when I get there. But yeah. Might as well just hold up all the snipers there. And there's only one pass to take here. Which is just up. So you don't got to worry about that. Then once you get up here... This area, I believe, has a lot of enemies hidden. And the sniper. But I forget. But as I, I think as long as you stay on the right side here, it should be fine. Kind of, you know, stick on the right side here. There shouldn't be any enemies going on here. Wait for it. I mean, we have a little prisoner there. We can rescue them. Act accidentally activated the shield. You know, whatever, whatever. I believe there is a sniper, but... Or at least, like, there's definitely enemies in front here. But as long as you kind of take the right path, it's really a non-issue. But yeah, okay. So, back to non-lethal versus lethal play. So, in Peace Walker, you now have MSF, which is kind of your big like mother base military thing so now every soldier you leave alive becomes a useful tool for your base so now you have like an actual incentive to not kill people however in peace walker that doesn't make you the hero this is where like the, th the thematic stuff gets really interesting because playing the non-lethal way gives you more soldiers to add to your warmongering spreadsheets and more people to send to fighting conflicts around the world for ca for cash it's sneaky how this game makes you makes being the villain fun, and it's really easy to slip into it. Okay, so this little final area doesn't really have any sneaking snipers or any dudes kind of posted in positions. We're now dealing with more normal guards who just kind of walk around and stuff, which are more fun to deal with. But yeah, we're just back here. So kind of if you run up really quickly, you can kind of hold up that guy, then hold up that guy. And I believe on this side here is going to be a guard. No. All right, nice, nice. So I believe here you can kind of just run straight to the end of the level and yeah that makes this part really easy though however this game's gonna do make us do a little bit of backtracking and then things are gonna get a little bit more complicated once we do that because we do not have the right card key so now we need to backtrack to an area where an enemy might actually have the right card key nevertheless i did get an s rank in this mission very very nice 
Also, I should probably mention that this game is indeed a retcon of Portable Ops because Go Kojima didn't direct Portable Ops. So, like, this game pretends that Big Boss did something before Peace Walker, but not exactly the thing he did in Portable Ops because multiple events that happen in Portable Ops contradict some of the major moments in this game. Okay, so, yeah. Uh, pretty much run really quickly up here and then hold up those two guards there and then run straight down like pretty much run around it Oh wait, maybe you should wait for that guy But if you run straight at him and like seek you see him before he causes an alert phase It should be just fine and that's pretty much how you handle that area The only thing there's like four enemies in that little area and like I left one of them like kind of safe pretty much I mean I, I held up three dudes, but there's still one dude walking around so when you return to that area You know be wary of that and now for here, things get a little more complicated now that we're going back through it. They kind of reposition some of the snipers or some of the dudes hiding around. So here, I believe that the strategy is still stick to the right. Though there's going to be two guys here. Hold up the guy there. Hold up the guy there. Yeah, there's going to be a sniper, at I believe, at the end of this area. So it's a nice little reuse of the area and also kind of a nice little way to add some backtracking to the game. I don't know. Metal Gear always like, has you backtracking through stuff. And like the way Peace Walker handles it, it is, it's, it's pretty all right, I'd say. I mean, like the most egregious backtracking is always going to be like in the first couple Metal Gear Solid. Like in, the, like in the first Metal Gear Solid and I believe like Metal Gear as well, though I don't know. Uh, and I need I need to replay Metal Gear and Metal Gear 2 to like confirm if it's worse than like Metal Gear Solid 1's backtracking. The other games you have pretty smart use of backtracking. Oh no, there wasn't a sniper in that previous area. It was just like the normal posted enemies. But there is a sniper down here. So we're going to throw some smoke grenades to kind of throw them off a bit. Yeah, yeah. Oh, something weird is going to happen when you smoke a certain enemy is that sometimes they'll be smart enough that they'll just stay laying down. And then if, if they stay laying down, then you can't exactly seek you see them because they're on the ground. And you can't hold them up until they're done being smoked. So that can kind of waste time. However, there I got very lucky that uh, I actually, that the smoker it actually made him stand up before he got smoked. Because if he got smoked while still laying down, that would just waste my time. So here we're going to take kind of the left path, but like on the map screen, it's the right path. Because it's here where I believe the enemy with the with the ID card shows up. Now, this is something I'm a little unsure of. I don't know if the ID card enemy is random. Cause I don't know. I've had him show up here and I've had him show up at like the at like the very last area. So your backtracking can either be up to here or way, way more than this. But I don't know what decides it. So yeah, pretty much it's the guy with an orange here who has the ID card. Like this game has a little puzzle where you have to listen for a certain bird. But that doesn't really matter. What matters is, is it the guy with the orange shirt here? But I don't know if he's always going to show up here. But I guess in this run, he did. So, yeah. I don't know. If someone could clarify that in the comments, that'd be very helpful. Because I really don't know. Like, I honestly really don't know. But if he does show up there, it makes this section a lot shorter. When this section being shorter means we get the S rank easier. Oh, yeah. Also, since we're here... Uh, there will be an insane QTE sequence like, at the like, at the finale of this mission. So like I mean this is like and that's kind of egregious for this game in particular. Okay, so I believe what happens is if you don't hold up both snipers, uh, one of the snipers will be repositioned to this area. Though I don't know if they actually did that. I do remember one of the missions. If you don't take out all the if you don't hold up all the snipers or like put them out of commission, they'll be repositioned to like kind of snipe you. Though I guess since I went to the right and I like held up the sniper on the right, then the left sniper doesn't really affect me because I did not hold up that guy. <laughs> I hope y'all are understanding what I am saying. But yeah, like at the very end of this mission, like this is one of the longer missions in the game, you know, like backtracking back and forth. Like it's not like a one or two minute thing. It's like a seven to eight minute thing more like or maybe six. So it's like for this to be the mission where they add some like random QTEs, which could screw up your entire S rank run. Very annoying and very obnoxious indeed. So yeah, I don't know. Another thing about this game is probably the way they rehandle the briefing things. So, or the way they rehandle the codec. So I mean, there is kind of a codec in this game, but it doesn't really have the same use as the codec in previous games. Instead, like the use of what the previous codec had is now put into the cassette tapes. So yeah, a lot of extra story details and exposition is put into cassette tapes, which you can collect by doing specific things during missions or just by completing side content in general. 
There's also briefing files for what I believe are all the missions, but the issue is that I beat some of these missions in less than a minute, dog. Like, like I mean, there was a previous mission which I beat in less in like about a minute, and there's a and there's an upcoming mission which I'll also beat in like less than a minute. And yeah, th I believe this is the part where a bunch of QTEs happen, or actually, this, it may be a different mission where a bunch of QTEs happen. Hmm. I guess I was wrong there. Oh no no, this is the mission with a bunch of QTEs. Oh dear. So, yeah. Like, I don't know, these tapes are pretty much the replacement for the codec. And I guess what's throwing me off is that, they're, is that like, in previous games, they were kind of forced upon you. But, like, in Beast Walker, they kind of got rid of that. Like, so these tapes are completely optional. So, yeah, these tapes give more context to certain areas, the mission at hand, and also have some pretty funny character moments. Like, kind of like the secret codec conversations in the previous games. Like, an advantage of putting a lot of info in these tapes is that the main cutscenes don't have to waste too much time and they kind of get to the point faster than any of the previous games. Like, these cutscenes really, like, don't have, mu like, kind of, like, lack the heavy exposition of, like, previous games. So, they have a really great flow to them. And I'd say that in this game in particular, I'd say that this approach works because the main story and cutscene on hand feel pretty substantial that I don't really feel like I have to listen to the six to the over six hours of optional conversations. Just to be happy with the story of this game though, you shouldn't exactly skip the, the cassette tapes because they do give more insight into certain dubious events. Like you unlock a very crucial tape after doing all the main and extra ops. Like this format of storytelling I'll take more issue with in future entries, though here it mostly works. It doesn't mean I'm fully on board with this game's story though, because that is another issue. I gotta say, I absolutely HATE that like they recreate like the final boss fight with like the boss with these fucking QTEs, are you serious? It just, it feels kind of insulting. And I'll mention why it's a little more insulting later, but like, I, I kinda hate it. And also throughout this entire sequence, uh, Big Boss is misremembering how this event went down because the boss is just saying a bunch of lines from like the beginning of the game, but she doesn't say these things like during this boss fight. And I, I kind of used to hate that, but now I kind of see it in a more positive light because I don't know a big theme of like this entire saga is that Big Boss misremem like doesn't really follow the will of the boss, like he misinterprets it. He misinterprets what the boss actually wanted for the world. And I guess part of that is maybe because he misremembered how his confrontation actually went down. So maybe that could be like a little clever storytelling thing, which I kind of didn't notice the first time through, and I was just more upset with it. But maybe there is a maybe there is a purpose to this. But I might be giving the game too much credit with that. But this game does do a lot of really neat things. But yeah, the QTE stuff is stupid. I'm defecting to the Soviet Union, Jack. You can't come with us. Oh, right, so now I'm going to complain about the tank and helicopter boss fights because they're way, way too overused in the extra ops. Like, I mean, thankfully, the ones presented in the main ops aren't too bad and they aren't too plentiful. And you can pretty much stealth your way through them, but they get grueling in the extra ops as the game makes them harder and harder, which requires you to grind for better equipment over and over. And then you reach a point where the mission you're doing so that a weapon can develop faster is the same mission you're developing the weapon for. The difficulty curve is annoying indeed. Like this game, this game's design was very much inspired by Monster Hunter. And it even has some Monster Hunter boss fights as kind of little Easter eggs. I'll talk about that later. Right now, we're challenging the Chrysalis. Crystal, 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 Crystal. And now here, uh, this is a part of the game where I wonder why no other video I've seen has used chat grenades. They don't penalize you for the ranking, and they're insanely useful. And well, to be fair, I'm using like super overpowered equipment to deal with the Chrysalis. But yeah, like just throw out a couple chaff grenades, it keeps the Chrysalis completely in place, so you can get a nice free shot at the Chrysalis, and boom. You're good to go. I mean, I guess on a new game, you don't deal enough damage for like the shaft grenades to be that useful, but it still has use. And now I kind of missed uh, my third shaft grenade, which is such a shame. And now I'm just kind of I'm going to use the targeting system, like in which the rocket launcher actually targets. But like the shaft grenade was really useful for when I didn't need, so I so I wouldn't need to target like the chrysalis here. And thankfully, I'm using like uh, new game plus weapons. So, like, the damage I deal is just insane. Because pretty much the biggest issue with the Chrysalis here is that machine gun fire. Good lord. Oh, to be fair, like, the way I'm breaking, like, these first two, like, big robot boss fights kind of ignores a lot of the things they do during the second and third phase. So, 
I don't know, when it comes to analyzing this entire fight, there's a lot of things I'm missing by, like, like booty slamming these boss fights so hard. But, you know, if I let them play out their entire phase, I, no damage may actually be impossible. And I have not seen a single video of someone no damaging this fight on a normal playthrough. So, you know, like, screw you, okay? I'm gonna do it, like, this way, and that's just how it's gonna be. Like, I don't know, there's this whole phase where, like, she sh this uh, robot shoots out kidnappers, and kidnappers are this enemy type, which, like, can shoot you with machine gun fire as well, but they can also shoot a core to kind of kidnap you. They showed up in some of the previous cutscenes where you have to rescue Amanda and all that. Those guys show up, so this boss fight can spawn those, and that's kind of a neat little part of the fight. And also the pupa. I skipped an entire phase with, like, the pupa uh, shoots a bunch of, like, electrical nodes or whatever. I don't know what they're called. Pretty much like a bunch of electricity things, which like you need to like take them out because if you leave them there, then a bunch of electrical like currents will like flow through the entire battlefield and you'll like take damage. So I skipped that entire part. Though to be fair, no damaging that part I think may actually be impossible, maybe because I've never seen anyone do it. But yeah, like to be fair, when I say I've never seen anyone do it, I've never seen anyone upload a video called Peace Walker boss fights no damage i've only like there's speed runs maybe someone did it in a speed run i don't know I, i'm not gonna see the entire speed run just in case there's a no damage though maybe i should have done that research just to be 100 percent sure but thankfully i was able to no damage the boss fights on my own terms i had i didn't cut any short i didn't take any shortcuts well aside from new game plus that is a shortcut but yeah i mean at least i'm done at least i know it's possible and maybe on a new game if you're patient enough it is also possible but I'm not that patient, <laughs> and this video is long enough as it is. So yeah, I'm happy with what I was able to do, though with these first two boss fights, maybe it's a bit much. Some later fights take a little longer to like middle down and have a little bit more challenging aspects to their design, which I have to get used to. If you attack parts on the exterior of the machine, the memory ports that control those parts should light up. You can tell what so anyways, back to how this game is inspired by Monster Hunter. So like, it, it really is inspired by like, Monster Hunter's design. And it even has some Monster Hunter boss fights as extra ops, which is really funny. But like, Monster Hunter design is kind of like, hey yo, here's a boss that will take like 30 to 40 minutes, though with a few, few with a few of your mates, you can cut that down to like 5 or 10 minutes. And Peace Walker kind of takes that same approach with its boss fights, and it makes them quite annoying when you're fighting them alone. And especially when, like, the only bosses you fight in this game are giant health sponge robots. Like, they aren't really bad fights at all. Each one of them has a distinct design and feel to them. And they're probably, like, the best giant robot fights in the series. But they just don't compare to the clever, like, human encounters of previous games. Like, I'd say there's a good reason previous games only had a giant robot boss at the very end instead of making every single fight a giant robot. Also, the combat in Peace Walker isn't as developed as Monster Hunter's. Like, Monster Hunter has, like, 9 to 12 different fighting styles. I don't remember the exact number. I'm just making that up. But, like, it's pretty close. Like, different fighting styles, each with their own tech to learn, plus an insane number of monsters with distinct movesets. While in Peace Walker, you just kind of point and shoot at the robots, whether it be rocket launchers or machine guns. You know, you point and shoot, and the shooting isn't really that satisfying. I mean, it's satisfying for what it is, but it's not really, like, you know, top-tier, like, action shooting or whatever. So... That's probably why I'm more on board with Monster Hunter fights than Peace Walker fights, is what I'm trying to say. Like, I mean, it, it, I mean, honestly, like, the things it takes from Monster Hunter are really good. Kind of like how shooting certain parts of the boss fight gives you certain parts to develop for, like, your later robots. Like, I mean, there's a lot of smart decisions. There's a lot of smart things from Monster Hunter, which are also in this game, but it just isn't as successful as Monster Hunter. But to be fair, this game isn't only boss fights. It's also sneaky. It's just that the boss fight portion is a bit of a weak point even if it does have some strong elements to it so anyways here's the level which i'm gonna be in i believe less than a minute or maybe in a minute because it's only this area this entire like like main op is just this area so like you just kind of like okay like running down here you can't exactly make it through but there's a prisoner here so i'm gonna extract a prisoner so we pretty much have to run down here then kind of cut through here and like the thing is the thing that makes me really sad about this area is that it's honestly one of the more complicated areas in the game you can get on the rooftops and climb around there but it's just like there's nothing to do here aside from maybe collecting a few secret documents here yeah hold up that guy hold up that guy there's gonna be a guy on the roof there it's gonna you can just kind of run past him doesn't really matter i mean he's gonna look back at you at one point so you don't exactly want to run past him when he's like looking over here and that's it that's the entire main op. I mean, there's more to explore in that area, but there's not much incentive to do so. 
Maybe they should have made an objective where you have to get a certain like file in like one of the towers and then you continue forward. But no, you just continue forward and that's it. Though to be fair, if they made one main op like that and then like the entire combat gauntlet that happens like next, uh, that would be horrible. But you know, like it's also mm, too short, but also if they included the next part of this level into this level, horrible, that would be so annoying. So now here is a big, big no combat down. encounter, and yeah, like I don't know, you kind of, it's pretty much just sniping the enemies with uh, the Mark II, Snipers pretty much, or is it even called the Mark II in this game, like on the Mark XXII? So yeah, pretty much, uh, you can block machine gun fire with your shield here. And, um, okay, I'm, there's different suits in this game. I don't know, sneaking suit, I, get, I believe it gives you more inventory space to use, uh, like, items and stuff. While the battle suit here allows you to hold three weapons at once. And then the normal suits are kind of more in, in between of those two. And then there's, like, the naked suit, which I don't know how they modify things, but I did use the naked suit against the pupa with the pink pants because I thought it'd be funny. That will not be the last time you see that suit, by the way. It will come back later. You know, be hyped for that. So the sniper things here, you cannot block them. So you're gonna have to take cover against the snipers. However, if you get a lead on a sniper and you like like that, just shoot them like two to three times and you should be pretty much good to go. They're actually pretty slow on like actually firing. So if you have like a good shot on him and like after you shoot him once, like a red line shows up on you, keep shooting him because you're gonna knock him out before he shoots you. Also, like these little kidnappers are gonna be showing up every now and then. That's why I brought this gun to deal with them. So, you know, if they get a little too close to your position, just pull out the gun there and here and there. And yeah, I don't know, once you take out a certain group of enemies, these guys are going to spawn. And like the enemies that spawn are either the ones that are really far away and have snipers and rocket launchers or the ones that are going to pull up to your position. And the ones that pull up to your position are very easy as well, as long as you have this shield here. So pretty much just kind of wait for them to show up and you can kind of get a lot of really good headshots. Yeah, like they'll just be walking in a straight line for the most part, just kind of boom, headshot. I mean, no, no headshot there, but you know, just... And as long as you have the shield, you also have the protection for the machine gun fire. Though, to be fair, it's not always going to work, but it works like 90 or 80% of the time. Which is very good for no damage when compared to nothing at all. So this pretty much gives you the ability to just fire and also be protected. Though one disadvantage of the shield is that, I don't know, your reloads... I don't know, every time you like reload your weapon when you shoot it once with like the Mark II, I don't know, I don't know if it's really if reload is the right term for it. I don't know. There's this thing you have to do after shooting it once. I don't know, like recock it or whatever. Uh, it's a lot slower when you have the shield to play. But you know, it, it, it's kind of balanced out by the fact that I am protected. and I'm not going to take any damage. As a, I don't know, with most S ranks I see in this game, like the way they do it is they just have health items and they just kind of power through it to get the best speed. And to be fair, for a certain mission, I believe that's the only way to get the S rank, but for every other mission, you could do it without taking damage just fine. I mean, for speedruns, I understand. It's more about speed, it's not damage, but like, it's just... I should have seen more people no damage these missions uh, like a lot sooner than I have. And by a lot sooner, I mean I'm like, I'm like one of the only people who has done it, at least one of the only documented people. Because I don't know, maybe people have done it and their videos just didn't get popular. To be fair, I'm not exactly the most popular guy ever, but you know. I feel like this video is going to show up in YouTube recommendations a lot, like, sooner than others. Which is a shame. I don't know. YouTube's got to give more exposure to people who have no damage sections of games, which, like, no one else has. So it's like, well, come on, man. Or at least no one else who has, like, publicly said it. Because it's just weird. It's weird how all this works. So yeah, when I got a shot there, I did not need to move out of the way. I could have just stayed there and, like, kind of shot him a few more times, and it would have been just fine. As long as I kept my reticle, like, on him. And that's another thing. Peace Walker's reticle is, like, weird. I guess they were trying to make, like, shooting enemies harder, but also easier. Because, like, I mean, it's not, like, 100%. Cause there's, like, a little bit of empty space where you're shooting an enemy where it's gonna hit them, it's not gonna hit them. So it's, like, easier, but also harder to shoot enemies. I don't know. But it's an alright reticle. I'd say it works pretty well. So, yeah, pretty much. I don't know, if an enemy has a rocket launcher, pretty much either take cover or get out of the way. You cannot block the rocket launcher. Same with the sniper rifles. But then for, like, the machine gun fire dudes, you should be fine. Though, I believe sometimes they'll throw grenades. Though, I don't know if that becomes an issue in this fight. But maybe if they get really close to you, they'll shoot grenades. And also, if they get right up in your face, they can pull out a knife and, like, knock you down. But that 
doesn't really happen with me. So yeah, here I believe since I'm not really dealing with anyone too dangerous, I'm going to try to get closer to these enemies to save time. And to be fair, I don't really need to stay in the position I was in. I could have moved a bit maybe during certain sections. Oh, there we go. There's the machine gun fire. I got really stressed there, so I got to pull up the shield to kind of take these guys out. Boom, one by one. Trying to get headshots. Not really succeeding here. Because I don't know, when it comes to like shooting them in the body, it takes like two or three hits to take them out immediately. Especially for these really armored guys. Oh yeah, so here's where that design thing shows up. So remember when I said that the game will kind of like have a slight pause just to give you time to collect enemies with the Fulton recovery system? Well, here's where like the blue skulls come in. So if you kill an enemy and they're dead during one of these combat encounters, a red skull will appear over them. But if you take them out non-lethally, a blue skull will appear over them. Because it's kind of like these sections where like, you know, they can't exactly wake up the enemy because if they do, that will make this encounter a lot more annoying. But they don't want you to like have the enemy dead. So instead of having like a red skull and having them be dead, instead you have blue skulls. And what the blue skulls do is that there's like a big, there's like a good chunk of time where they're gonna be on the field before they despawn. And during that time, the game wants you to fulton and like extract them. Though, I don't know, you don't have to. You can kind of just wait for them to die, non-lethally, of course. And that's that. So that's kind of a nice way to kind of balance things out. It's, it's a really nice way to kind of balance out the Fulton and recovery system. And yeah, for like this final encounter, we just have a bunch of guys with like rocket launchers and snipers, I believe. There we go, sniper. I do not need to hide from that guy. I could just continue shooting him and I would be fine. Though, I guess I was playing it pretty safe in this encounter. Oh yeah, also, when you're like laying down... Oh, so like laying down does have uses. I mean, yeah, you can't crawl anymore. It sucks. But laying down does have uses. You recover health faster when you're laying down and also you can crouch in like in this cover and also i've had moments where i believe like the shield on my back actually deflected bullets though it's a very rare thing and it's kind of hard to do so i don't recommend like actually trying to do that like legit you're better off like just taking cover than like trying to depend on the shield on your back and i do not know why i unequipped that shield what give me my shield back bro oh my goodness what am i doing i think i might have like unequipped the shield like by accident and i just didn't notice so yeah, as you can see here, I can like reload my gun quicker than I would with the shield. So that's like the one disadvantage of the shield. But yeah, I guess I don't have shield anymore. What's going on with that? Also, could someone tell me if uh, you run slower in the battle suit? Because I mean, it's true in like the Phantom Pain, but I do not know if it's true here in Peace Walker. Oh yeah, so here uh, I'm going to pull out the little sniper rifle here. And I'm going to show you that this thing sucks ass. Look at it, it's so shaky and bad. I mean, uh you're, you're better off just sniping people with a pistol than this bloody sniper. Look at it. Ew, dude. Like, ew. So, yeah, you're never going to see that sniper again because it's just disgusting. And here I'm going to do a little funny thing. I was actually planning on making this image the thumbnail, but I found a cooler image for, like, the no comment. I was going to make that the image for the no commentary, but I found a cooler thing for the no commentary. Now, my commentary thumbnail, I have not decided it yet, so I guess I'll just decide that later, but... Yeah, and now here we have the cocoon fight coming up. Here is the big cocoon, start the fight, immediately go up, and then switch to the other weapon, go up. So, the thing with the big rocket launcher weapons... Oh yeah, so I brought three rocket launchers, so I immediately switched between all of them really, really quickly. So the thing with all the rocket launcher weapons is that, like, they have a really long reload time. However, if you have three of them, like, all with a bullet, all with, like, a rocket ready to launch, just shoot one, then switch to the other weapon, shoot one, and then switch to the other weapon, shoot one, and then boom. Very big damage for the beginning of the fight. And then after that, he the, this thing's gonna pull out its rocket, so it kind of just dodge that and then after it pulls out and then after the whole big rocket attack i recommend not kind of laying down waiting for this thing to kind of slam your thing and then get a few shots in there i recommend three because after three it's going to start shooting the machine guns and then take cover again it's gonna, very soon it's going to shoot the machine guns at you i believe maybe i could have had more time to shoot more nope there we go the machine guns so yeah taking cover here and thankfully like with my new game plus weaponry i'm able to deal that much damage because if i wasn't able to do that much damage this fight would have gotten a lot more prolonged though to be fair i don't know right now honestly there might be a way to no damage this fight just through, like at this location at this moment as long as you can avoid all the machine gun fire and stuff though this boss fight can deal other attacks can get a little dangerous and yeah once you take out like six of its little health chunks there it has a little period where it's pretty much free to be damaged but it's also going to be moving which makes it a little challenging and yeah i mean what th this fight's awesome 
Uh, honestly, considering it, this is my favorite fight in the game because like, it's just a massive thing. And like later on, you can actually walk on top of it, trying to like shut it down from there. Like honestly, really cool design. Though some of the other boss fights have a more traditional design, which could be fun. But like this one, like dude, you're fighting a fortress. How's that not awesome? Like, let's go. And yeah, after a certain while, after you do enough damage, the ladder comes down, which kind of leads to some of its more challenging sections. And it's also the reason I haven't used the chaff grenade yet. I'm saving them all for the part where I'm climbing onto like the cocoon here. Oh yeah, so for this rocket thing, you can do a nasty thing where if you run in one direction for too long, it'll actually like predict that and like shoot a rocket in front of you. So pay attention where that thing is pointing. Oh yeah, so pretty much the way I handle this, I wait for like the for when the cocoon is on its last life bar, and then that's when I'm gonna climb on top of it. Cause if you deplete his entire health bar while you're not on top of it, then you're gonna have to climb the entire thing to like, kind of take down the little AI pod thing. AI AI pod health because I don't know pretty much the way the game this game's boss fights work is that after you de deplete his entire health bar then you have to very quickly destroy the AI pod and climb into it because if you like don't do that in a certain amount of time the boss fight regains a bit of its health back so if you take out this thing's entire health bar while you're not on top of it the entire climb to get to it is going to take too long and it's going to get all its health back and then at this point you won't be able to like take down its health bar without taking damage because these machine gun things are going to deal damage to you it's going to take too long so instead what i do is i leave this like i kind of let this boss fight have like one health bar or at least something which i can take down very easily when i get on top of there and then using the, the three chaff grenades which i have i use them i pretty much just throw them while i'm trying to climb on top of the thing and that's pretty much how i get onto here and then once i'm on here i just deplete that one health bar and then i'm able to deplete the ai pod health bar really easily and then boom we climb in and that is the fight so yeah i don't know how you would do that on a new game because this thing has a lot a lot a lot of health but there might be a way to kind of you know script that or maybe a way to deal with it just you have to be very very patient so there was a point in my metal gear solid 4 video where like i just started talking shit about it so this is that point of peace walker so in a grander sense, this is the point where I started having issues with the big boss prequels. Like, the main hook of this game is really good. Like, yo, what's going on with the boss? What's she doing? And I can kind of buy that Snake is still doubting the info that Eva gave him, even though it's a, still a bit of a stretch, but you know, whatever. But the story told after that just feels like it's over-explaining what Snake Eater already showed so beautifully in its ending. Like, nah, it isn't good enough that his country killed one of the most important people in his life. Like, nah, that's not an, that's not good enough to justify his downfall. He also needs to fight a bunch of giant robots that don't fit the time period. And also, Hot Coldman planned the entire Snake Eater incident because we so needed that explained. That one is particularly horrible. Portable Ops had its own version of that, but it did better with what it had, though I'm still not fully on board with either version of that explanation. By the end of Peace Walker's false ending, we haven't really learned anything that substantial, which Snake Eater didn't already brilliantly infer with its ending. At this point, we're just being beaten over the head with it. Seems like, you know, your final confrontation with the boss being a QTE cutscene, and that whole dumbass thing where you're you putting down your horse flashes you back to putting down the boss just adds insult to injury. Like, it's a dumb prequel story which commits a lot of dumb prequel sins, which I wish I could appreciate more because it does a lot of things really well, but the overall package annoys me. Like, Huey being the exact same as Otacon is another annoying prequel trope where prequels that are made after the other titles try and fail to retroactively make the overall story more grandiose by implying that future events were always bound to happen as if fate was always going to lead down that road, and Huey and Big Boss's relationship being nearly identical to Solid Snake and Otacon's is indeed a misguided version of this trope. Anyways, uh, this level here, we're gonna throw a smoke grenade right here, and then we're gonna knock everyone out with CQ. You see like nah solid snake and otacon's meeting wasn't just some random chance moment which led to a surprising bond building between them their dads also went through the same exact shit and what do you know they also fought giant robots way before they were bone wow so cool deja vu fuck off kojima so yeah, that's how you take out the six guys. I don't know, it doesn't always work, but I guess the way I positioned myself with the CQC thing, it was very nice. And that was also the very first time I took out six guys with CQC. So you know, very cool, very nice. So yeah, this level, the stealth gets a little bit more complicated. 
or at the very least a little more challenging like there's a little bit tighter rooms guards could be a little bit more aggressive here and there sometimes they adopt weird patterns which i very much appreciate but because i don't know some of the previous levels can get pretty easy i don't know you have like the first couple like areas which are like all right but very easy Freak. then you have that part with like the oh i got so lucky that i held up that Freak. guard then that guard noticed me but then i did the cqc to knock him out i don't know just like those little moments are very exciting we had you have guards like running down this area because i think they were trying to like get to the hangar or whatever and that can kind of make this more challenging so here i'm going to chase this guy for no reason you don't need to chase that guy he's not going to be part of this level ever again but I did not know that. So yeah, they just kind of go to the elevator and kind of take that. Freeze. But I decided to just hold them up just because. But yeah, like this level is a little more challenging than some of the stuff that came previously. And we're kind of in a complex now. We're infiltrating a building though. This, is, this doesn't have the same epicness as like Shadow Moses or whatever. But you know, whatever. I, what, I don't care anymore. It's, it's a cool little stealth challenge. Cool little stealth area. And like it's challenging enough compared to some of the stuff that came before. I mean, you have like the parts with like the hidden snipers and the hidden people. That one's not that terribly engaging, though. Sometimes like it's kind of a nice little breakup from like the other kind of stealth challenges the game was putting you through. But this is more what I wanted from the other sections. Just you know, more challenge. Okay, let's go. And yeah, I don't really know what strategy to go with in this area. I mean, I just, I mean, in the beginning, you know, watch out for the guards coming down the like the corridor. Like you don't want to deal with them. And also just kind of, you know, be careful, avoid guard sight lines and all that. So now here, there's going to be a guard with a shotgun there. We're going to wait for him to turn around, then we're going to hold him up. Oh yeah, so, so I mean, this is a certain thing you can use, which isn't as useful as assault on radar, but it has a lot more battery, and it's a sonic eye. And even then, a sonic eye is absolutely fantastic for figuring out where enemies are, because it pretty much just pinpoints every footstep an enemy takes. So you can just kind of use it, and then boom, you know where people are. So yeah, you can run up to that guy, hold him up, and... Uh, there's going to be a guy with a shield there, and I believe we're going to smoke grenade him, and there's going to be another guard just yes, walking no. down there. Oh, this is a part which I actually kind of screw up, because, like, uh, the guard the guard I hold up here, that guy notices him, and now I have to quickly kind of scramble my ass a new strategy, and my new strategy is just smoke grenade. So, yeah, I smoked this area up, and now I can take this guy out very nice. Freeze. Freeze. And I think this guy's going to get up, so I'm actually going to have to freeze him as well. So I'm going to throw a smoke grenade up there, but then that guy got up, because I guess the other guy woke him up or something, I don't know. And I have to quickly switch to the banana, or I could just knock him out by knocking him out a second time. But yeah, I see QC, the guy with the shield, so now I'm going to walk around behind him and knock him out. So yeah, smoke grenades pretty much solve any issue which, like, running up and holding up someone doesn't. Like, it really does when it comes to this game stealth. And now we just kind of mash that triangle button a lot, though. It is kind of mean that this section has you smashing that triangle button when the next section is going to be even worse. And oh my goodness. So okay, so this part of the game, the stealth gets a lot more challenging. But also, they decided to include probably the toughest QTE onslaught in the entire game just to hate because they hate you. Okay, look at this nonsense right here. I'm not even going to stop. <laughs> Did you see all that? That was absolutely ridiculous. Like imagine like perfectly sneaking your way through one of the harder areas to sneak your way through and then being onslaughted with that. Boom, your S rank's ruined. Like, ah, uh, I hate this game, bro. Now actually, I actually quite like this game, but like, I hate that. Like, oh my goodness, the cussing interaction thing is so stupid. I'm just glad that future games got rid of it. Ugh. Ugh. Anyways, here is the obligatory torture sequence. Now, uh, I did no damage every single main op in this game, but this is the one part where I take damage. But to be fair, it's like a mandatory damage thing, so I decided not to include it in the time codes this time. Because this is actually the first Metal Gear Solid game where every single section of the game can be no damage, at least every single section of the main ops. The extra ops are a completely different story, and I'm sure there is at least one moment in the extra ops where you're going to have to take damage, because they just get gruelingly difficult at one point. 
but for main ops, absolutely, like, it can absolutely be no damage. And honestly, very easily for 90% of it, it's just one main op in particular is hell to no damage in some of the boss fights as well. So here I'm going to continue talking about story stuff. However, uh, instead of like hating Peace Walker, I'm going to say some of the positives. Of it. So honestly, some of the positives of Peace Walker's writing is that it's pretty funny, which when you consider how cringy some of the humor in the previous game was, which was the fourth one, that's a great improvement. But in a grander sense, this game has a great charm to it. The way characters talk to one another has a good humanity and life to it. And that applies to a, cup, a bit of a cast as well. Like, Kaz is brilliant in this game. I mean, he's instantly likable. And I'd say a cool way to bring back an important character from future entries. The big boss in this game also has great, a lot of great scenes. And David Hayter is killing it as well. The game mostly has a lighter tone than the previous game. It is, I believe, the first teen rated game, but this lighter tone also hides some of the more insidious moments of the game. That is something I would say this game handles really well. You aren't really a good person in this game. The cutscene and presentation makes it the cutscenes and presentation make it seem like you're this grand like are like you're on this grand adventure. You're like, you know, you're fighting with the rebels, you're building a resistance as the awesome big boss. Oh yeah, by the way, you go in the mirror, you pull out this like little string here, which you're gonna use to break out. That's how you break out. Wait for this guard to turn around. Yeah, you get it. But yeah, you're like, you know, building a resistance as the awesome big boss, the same awesome big boss who recruits child soldiers. But in this presentation, but in the presentation of this really charismatic speech, the same soldier, like that same child soldier then slaughters the people holding Big Boss hostage in the later acts of the game and then is rewarded by his peers and even has a smile on his face by the end but like the music swells and then you get lost in the moment but it's pretty sinister what's going on and like I mean that, like a lot of elements in Peace Walker are exactly like that like I'm not, I'm not gonna mention everything because I kind of want y'all to experience it you all to experience it but you know a lot of things in Peace Walker are kind of like that and it's a really smart element of the game I just wish that these elements were in service of a story that didn't constantly bother me with its prequel bullshit. But yeah. Prisoner escape. Security team, search the area. If I'm gonna keep complaining, a uh, hot cold man is a really lame villain. The other villains in this game really are not much better. And like the one twist villain in this game has really has great potential and is honestly like I think a great idea, but it, the game just kind of ruins it. And also, since I'm also complaining about Peace Walker, uh, the bird chick is just really nothing. Outside from like a few cassette tapes, she's a really nothing character, and she's also just kind of there because like when you zoom in on her boobs, the game goes. Meow. Also, uh, I gotta say some. I gotta. So now that I brought that up. I gotta talk about something I brought up in my Metal Gear Solid 1 video. I said something to the effect that Peace Walker can't be that perverted in comparison to previous entries because it was only on the PSP and I was so wrong. I completely forgot about a lot of the shit in Peace Walker. Like how in the first cutscene with pause, you can just zoom in and see your underwear. I mentioned the boing before, right? Yeah. Then there's the date mission with pause. Oh, yeah, what you do here is you run up to this area, hold that guy up, then knock this guy out, hold him up, and then you're at the elevator. Pretty easy stuff. But yeah, back to perversion. So yeah, you can also go on a date mission with pause, which if you S rank it, the second time you go there, she'll be in her underwear. Like it's fucking cringe. But that mission also foreshadows the true ending. Like dog, nah. These moments are probably the low, low point of Peace Walker's humor. Like, do not Enemy underestimate the PSP. It can do a lot more than you think. I made that mistake when I was, like, trying to remember this game, but I forgot so much. So, yeah, here, just kind of run up the up these stairs. And these guys, I forget what they're going to do. I think they're going to try to... No, they're going to be there. So, yeah, some smoke grenades should pretty much solve everything. And uh, most of the time you throw smoke grenades, the other guards don't really notice because they're either caught up in it or they're just not looking at it. Or the way they're positioned, like throwing smoke grenades isn't that big. Look at that, he was just standing there. He, he did not care. <laughs> like, I don't know, I feel like in previous games, if you threw a smoke grenade, other enemies would be like a lot more alarmed by that. But here, they're just kind of like, mm, yeah, all right, do it. So yeah. so yeah, this is a pretty challenging little stealth area, especially compared to some of the previous stuff in the game. I don't really have much more to say. I mean, like, oh yeah, I should probably mention uh, one more thing actually. 
I forgot what that one thing is. I don't have anything to mention anymore. <laughs> Mother base is already jam-packed. Lay off the Fulton recoveries until there's more room. Hmm? As usual, smoke grenades yeah. solve everything. Oh. Shield guys can be weird though. They don't exactly get as stunned as other enemies, but they practically get stunned. So you just kind of run behind them and take them out, but they don't have the whole little thing where they're shaking their hand in front of their face because, well, they have a shield in front of their face, but they're blinded and that's good enough. There's gonna be a guy there, so I guess I'll take him out because you know why not? A little, little freeze, a little nice freeze, and now we're gonna go back downstairs. So yeah, this area has like elevation. It has like different verticality. Whoa! There's a guy walking there. Oh dear. I think in this part of the section, there'll be like a whole group of enemies just standing there guarding it, but I guess sometimes they change up their patterns like now. So, you know, take up a little smoke grenade and now we're just gonna run over here. They'll yeah, there we go. Yeah, usually there's like a group of enemies just standing there taking guard. And it's honestly a really scary thing because if you try to approach it from the front, it'd be like a whole group of enemies you can't take down. Well, I mean, you could probably smoke grenade them. It'd be fine. But, you know, it'd be like you're sneaking past them. Model Splinter Cell always had moments like that. Like at, at the end of Chaos Theory, there's a neat little moment where you can sneak past an entire group of guards waiting to ambush you. That was kind of like that moment. But for some reason, I guess... They were moving around a little too much, but I still snuck past them, which is very nice, very nice. But yeah, I was go so yeah, that, that level had like a bit of verticality going on, but I don't know, the enemies like downstairs can't really affect you upstairs, so it's not as complicated or like as challenging as something from like Metal Gear Solid 2. Anyways, the first Peace Walker boss fight, so yeah, I, the, the, this is a bit challenging, but yeah, kinda, you're gonna wanna get some elevation on Peace Walker. So even with elevation, this fight can still be tough. So yeah, kind of get one shot there. And then there's going to be a point where like it's like launching S-Mines. And, and Peace Walker's going to stand really still. There's going to be a big roar there. Not really a good time to shoot her. And also sometimes when Peace Walker roars, it stuns you. And that lowers your sight gauge. So that's what's on the right there. Oh yeah, this this game takes... So yeah, the S-Mine things, I don't really know how to avoid them. You can actually shoot them down with machine guns. But I only brought rocket launchers because you're going to need all the rocket launchers you can get. Oh yeah, so she, the S-Mine attacks kind of goes up and it explodes in like a bunch of diagonal directions. So if you're standing up here, that really shouldn't affect you. But I don't know, sometimes it kind of affects me. And then for the rocket launcher, kind of run all the way to one side of a place. And that should be good enough most of the time. But just make sure that you're not stuck. And sometimes when Peace Walker gets a little too close, sometimes they'll do a flamethrower thing. And that sucks. But thankfully, she never did it in this fight in particular. So yeah, always shoot the AI pod. That one deals the most damage. Shooting anywhere else is kind of a pointless endeavor. So yeah, I've just been dealing a lot of really great damage so far. And I don't know what else to say about this fight. But yeah, it can be really challenging. Honestly, a lot of it's luck based, frankly. Honestly, as long as the Peace Walker keeps doing rocket launcher attacks, that's probably the best course of action. Especially when Peace Walker does like consecutive rocket launcher attacks where it's like it says firing rocket launcher and then it just shoots like four of them in a row like with little nice pause in between yeah s mines kind of random just kind of keep running hopefully it doesn't hit your little area because if it does you take damage yada yada i guess there's like one reason why most people have not tried to know damage these fights why did they drop down claymores i don't even have claymores equipped what am i what are claymores gonna do against a robot like this what's wrong with you game is probably because like, I guess a lot of the elements that no damage these fights can be like frustrating really random and you know that won't be so bad if I can take them out like really quickly with my OP weapons but on a new game when these fights take like 8 to 10 to maybe even 15 20 minutes those random elements add up and they get insanely annoying so that's probably why most people have not attempted a no damage of these fights and also because speed so I guess it would be faster to just tank the hits and like, try to avoid them. But to be fair, right now that's not really doing much of a difference. Though there is a certain mission where that will be a difference. So you do not know how hard this fight was to no damage. Even with like my increased damage, this was rather frustrating. It took me a few hours. However, you know what's even you know what's the bigger piss with the biggest piss of all is that after this rather challenging no damage, you have probably like. Be like one of the worst QTE smashing sequences, the worst QTE smashing sequence in the game. This game thought it'd be really cool that you have to smash triangle very specifically that you don't get hit by these rains of fire. So like, you have to smash it really hard to get ahead, but also like perfectly do it that you don't get hit by the ones behind. Ah, oh, why? It's cringe. It's so cringe. 
However, here uh, I learned that you can actually mess up this once and you'll still get S rank. So that, that was nice to know. However, it's this one in specific. Like everything else, you have to burp. But this one, you can mess it up once and you'll get 9 out of 10 cutscene interaction, which will still give you the S rank if you did the previous part like fast enough. So that is useful. I know here, do not mess this one up at all. You spam triangle, spam square, and also, no, spam the triangle, and also press a direction at some point. What an ass section. Like, ugh. Oh, it's so epic. It's like a set piece. Like, I hate you. Dude, come on. I guess, like, these mandatory QTs are probably, like, the only way I can include, like, these cutscenes without actually including the cutscenes. But, you know, you get to see what this game's visual style is like. And, yeah, I still like Gurukyo's style better, but this one's, like, really dynamic with all the moving parts and the way it kind of cuts here and there. Really good stuff. And also the, the way the comic paneling works. Really dynamic stuff. I like it. But, yeah. What a horrible section. Just, uh, <laughs> Approaching the border. Finally, that's over, and I mean, like, I one time I actually no damaged this fight, and then I screwed up that whole QTE thing, and I wasn't able to get an S rank, and I was so pissed about that. And this is the type of fight where I can get an S rank, though coming up in a few main ops, there's gonna be a part where I can't. Anyways, here is a sneaking challenge, probably like one of the more complicated in the game, because now you have these flying rovers to mess with. There's ways to avoid the patterns of the flying like little rovers, there, the little kidnappers. But I'm just gonna take the gonna take the approach where I just shoot them all down. So yeah, this time I do not have a banana because things have gotten serious. So here in one inventory slot I have the pistol, in the other inventory slot I have the machine gun. So here I'm gonna drop down here. There's gonna be a prisoner we can get, which is very nice. And also this is like dropping down here is a good way to sneak through the area. But I'm not, I don't exactly plan on sneaking past these kidnappers. I'm going toe to toe with with the kidnappers. So yeah, pull out that little gun there. Fulton recovery subject confirmed onboard helicopter. Boom. However, if you shoot them down, they'll explode and they'll alert all the guards around you. But you can still sneak through. It was just that it'll cause a caution state and that'll kind of make everything a lot more complicated. Now here I'm waiting for some like extra guards to show up because I don't know sometimes they can call in extra guards to check out an area. And usually they'll take the pattern of coming down here and like exploring, but here they don't do it, so I'm actually kind of wasting time here. But I'm gonna slowly figure out that I am indeed wasting time, and I'm just gonna move forward by throwing out a few smoke grenades. I'm gonna try to hit this guy up there, but it, it misses. But the smoke here is actually enough to stun him for a bit, so it worked out just fine for me. And now, yeah, no one showed up really. I don't know what happened to the extra guards. I guess I, that little explosion just wasn't enough to be on their radar. So I'm just kind of using the sonic eye to make sure where everyone is. There's a guard right here, and I'm trying to sneak up on him, but it's not really working out too well. So I'm kind of playing the patient game, but no, yep, there we go. Worked out just fine. Boom, freeze. hold up, freeze. Where are the extra guards? This is really weird. And no, here's a little like, kind of, what the hell are these things called? But well, whatever they're called, they it's kind of like the Metal Gear Solid 1 thing, except instead of rising, we're descending. Oh my God, it's a word demon. Guys, guys, we're a demon now, guys. Guys, I'm already a demon. I'm already a demon, guys. Uh, guys, guys, guys. Uh. Whatever. Now this area right here. Oh, now that I'm actually looking at this area, this game does something pretty clever with its next main op, even if the next main op, I believe, is like the hardest and most grueling thing in the entire game, and main ops wise. But whatever, I'll talk about it when we get there. So yeah, here, gonna throw a few smoke grenades. There is a kidnapper up above us. We're gonna have to, I'm gonna have to shoot it down at some point. Oh, I, to, I believe I did a smoke grenade so that the guard up ahead doesn't notice me when I shoot this thing down. Very nice, very smart. Oh, yeah, also the weapon I brought is silenced, but shooting that thing down still is gonna cause a lot of commotion. Also, you can shoot down the kidnapper on top of a guard, and if you kill them, it won't count as your kill. I mean, like, this game, like, the series has had stuff like that, where if you shoot an explosive barrel at a guard, and, like, the, and like the, the and if the guard dies from the, ex 
Oh yeah, did you hear that? That was like a red alert, but I smoked them, so like it didn't go into red alert. That was weird. <laughs> but it worked out just fine. The thing is, like that smoke's gonna run out at some point, right? But like I escaped this area without like an alert happening. So yeah, here I just ghosted those people. Though this isn't real ghosting because I interacted with the enemy. I don't know, ghosting's a whole different... Oh yeah, I remember what I wanted to mention. So that first YouTuber I mentioned, the one which no damage the final, final boss fight. Uh, let me look up their name again because it, I do want to shout them out once again. They... Yes, yeah, Sappy Joe Gaming. They actually did a ghost run of Spe Peace Walker where they don't interact with the enemy. They don't try to distract them, but they like get past every single enemy without touching them. So that's probably one way to make the game more complicated, but that's just not my play style for this game. I think it's more suited to hold us. But, you know, this game is possible to ghost. So, you know, that's really nice. So, I mean, you can make this more complicated by ghosting the game. So, that's one thing you can do. So, yeah, very nice, very nice. So, yeah, here, I'm going to hold that guy up. Then I'm going to throw some smoke grenades over there to blind the guards over there. So that when I shoot down the kidnapper over here, they won't notice. And also, when I try to climb up over there, they won't notice. Yep, yeah, shoot down the kidnapper right there. So this is kind of one way to get past the area without just tranquilizing the guards over there. I'm gonna, I think, oh, I guess I won't throw an extra smoke grenade because I threw two, I guess. I don't, did I throw two? Did I throw, did I throw one? I don't know. But yeah, I'm just gonna climb up here. Going to take this guard out here. And I got a little lucky because I don't know, the guard over there is like by a window, but I guess there was enough smoke in the window that he didn't notice me. So yeah, boom, hold up, hold up, and then we're gonna get this guy boom very nice and that kind of ends this level on a pretty interesting level kind of nice way to spice up the stealth gameplay but the stealth gameplay at its core is so simple that it's not really going to reach the challenges of like some of the previous games and especially not the future games so yeah just kind of i don't know weird thoughts on peace walker but it's done So here is the most challenging part of no damaging all the main ops. Oh my goodness, nothing comes close to this. So we're gonna start off, we're gonna have the shield, we're gonna have the battle suit, we have the mar we have the little tranquilizer. Hold up, we have the shield. We're gonna take out this guard over here. It takes like three tranquilizer points to take him out. I don't know, shoot him twice. And now we're gonna switch to like an Uzi. The reason I'm gonna use a little Uzi here is because like it's the only machine gun which you can really like one hand. So you can still like be protected by the shield while using the Uzi once we take out that little rover. We're gonna tranquilize this guy. And this guy has an annoying pattern of like slipping into cover, but whatever, we're gonna take him out. Reload, roll to the next part, sniper over there. Now we're gonna take out the sniper. We're gonna get like a kind of a good shot on the sniper. It's not too hard. And then here we go, snipe, snipe. And then once we do that, we're gonna switch over to the Uzi once again so we can take out the rover down here. And now we're gonna drop down. And now while we're walking to the stairs, we have enough time to reload both weapons, in fact. And we're gonna need like the tranquilizer once we come up here because there's gonna be two enemies we're gonna have to take out and we're gonna be using shield combat once again. We're gonna be using the riot shield a lot, a lot because it's pretty much like the only way to no damage this level. I have not seen a single video of someone no damaging this level and I can understand why because it is absolute hell, but I did it and I'm happy with it. But like, yeah, we're gonna tranquilize these two guards and then we're just gonna move on from there. Oh my goodness, like, I mean, thing is the shield is not 100% a perfect way to block all shots. Sometimes, like, a stray bullet will hit you, but you just gotta pray that it doesn't. <laughs> so, yeah, and now this next section, all oh, can be hell as well. Because, like, it can be a little random as well with the way enemies are placed and whether you can actually get a good shot or not. Because it's gonna be, like, one enemy troop from all way across your area. And you kind of have to get immediately into shield formation because sometimes he'll just immediately shoot you. And look, you, you saw that the bullets actually bounce off the shield, so it does protect you. So, like, if you can't knock out the guard all the way over there, like, immediately, switch to the Uzi so you can knock out the kidnapper immediately. And if you can't knock out the kidnapper immediately, then just switch over to smoke grenade because it's going to be a police officer with a shotgun. And you can't block the shotgun with your shield, so it's better you, to play it safe. Just throw out a smoke grenade to stun this guy so you can tranquilize him safely from there. Because, I don't know, messing around with whether you can tranquilize him three times before he shoots you with the shotgun is not something you want to play with. This mission is long, it's grueling, and that you do not want any uncertainties. And then after that, like, you should take out this guy. 
the thing is if you tr oh yeah and if you hear that it could either be a stun grenade a smoke grenade or an actual grenade and you just you're better off not figuring out which one it is you're better off just getting out of there and now here we have like four enemies to deal with or three i don't know there's the one on top there but i shot two tranquilizers so he's probably like taken out by now so we have one guy there one guy over there and then one guy heading out by the left however though one guy like behind this guy usually ends up taking like cover like i don't know in a below like i don't know he goes down to like a certain lower area so it's just kind of difficult to deal with and also i had like 22 like tranquilizer bullets by the end of this first section which means i had enough bullets to kind of enter this section without resupplying you will be resupplying because you're gonna you're gonna need a lot of tranquilizer bullets to get past this section so yeah there's gonna be this guy here and i guess because that guy's here there's not gonna be a guy over there now sometimes there's a guy like down there and like you know sometimes when you're running through you might miss him because he kind of he's a little camouflage there and yeah, there we go. We are taking everyone out. And I'm going to spin in circles because uh, I was just really stressed. And I guess I was taking a little break there. Spin in circles, spin in circles. And now we're going to call for a resupply. Make sure you throw your resupply, like little grenade here in a place where like you can actually be resupplied. Because there, there's certain areas you can't throw it because you won't be able to get support. So, I mean, to be fair, you're not going to be using that many supply grenades. So, you know, you can waste one or two. But it's better off you don't. You don't want to waste time. So, yeah, now that I have my my kind of tranquilizer pistol ready i'm gonna reload it however for this next session we're gonna actually want to equip the uzi here because we're gonna want to start off with the uzi and we're gonna take a crouching position because i'm not 100 percent sure about this but if you take a crouch a, tr a crouching position with the like shield it may actually protect you more but i can't scientifically prove that so i don't really know it's just it's just a hunch i have so yeah shoot out that barrel over there it'll take out the sniper on that bridge and it'll create more cover from the rocket launcher over there also shoot that over there to take out the kidnapper over there however it's gonna give uh, the other sniper there more room but ever quickly go to the sniper take him out there with like two tranquilizer shots get a good shot on him yeah yeah and then there's gonna be a police officer thankfully not a shotgun one one with a machine gun which actually can block the his fire we're gonna want to take him out quickly because even though we can't block his fire we do not want him on the playing field for long and then after that we're gonna want to take out the other barrel over there to create even more cover from the like rocket launcher and also shooting this barrel is gonna take out the kidnapper over there very nice and then there's gonna be a guard on your left so you're gonna want to you know take up a defensive position and now we're gonna take him out and now this guard plays a little bit more defensively this time I don't know, usually he's in a pretty open spot you can snipe but here he's uh, moving around he's like actually taking a bit of cover but we can still take him out quite easily but just watch out he can shoot and he can sometimes like a stray bullet will hit you because the shield won't take it and she's like oh my goodness horrible fight just so stressful all the time oh <laughs> and also while all this is happening there is another guard all the way at the end of this map with the rocket launcher but this but these two collapse collapsed bridges pretty much blocks every single rocket launcher shot getting a shot on this rocket launcher guy is not going to be too hard however i do kind of fail at it at this first time this is the mission where I get an A rank because the strategy I'm taking is too time consuming. But also it's like the only strategy which I've seen which has I successfully guaranteed a no damage. Well, not successfully. Honestly, quite a few quite a few parts of this are honestly get a bit random chance. It's hell, it's hell, it's hell. Ah, uh, I just I don't not want to do this again. I feel like I'm the only person who's done this, but if someone else has done this, show me because I have not seen it. YouTube has not recommended it and no one has said anything horrible section and to be fair it's probably like the only section which you can't at which like it is impossible to s rank and also no damage this at the exact same time and if that's wrong prove me wrong because i do believe it is impossible so yeah here i'm gonna get another supply drop because i believe that in this next upcoming section you won't be able to call a, a supply drop because you're kind of blocked by the whole building and all that but i have not tested it and to be fair this area does not give me room to test it so yeah this other area is hell however i came up with a pretty good strategy to deal with it you're gonna need chaff grenades and stun grenades bring those on this mission you're gonna need a really good loadout i mean my loadout i start i'm using every single tool in my arsenal to deal with this horrific hellscape of a level like oh my god so yeah run to the left immediately take cover pull out chaff grenade boom it's gonna stun the little kidnapper there so he's not gonna be an issue and then from this cover throw a bunch of stun grenades just a whole chunk of them and then pray that like three dudes get stunned by all the stun grenades you're throwing because now sometimes it doesn't work sometimes one of the enemies will just drop down to this platform trying to take you out and by this point this chaff grenade probably ran off kind of ran out so kind of get some space from you and like the kidnapper here blow it up because if you're too close to the kidnapper when you like blow it up it's gonna like land on you and like the explosive damage is gonna damage you and now run all the way over here do not run back i ran back because i thought maybe i could fault in those guys but you can't get on that platform 
So Fultoning those guys is out of the question. Because they're actually going to wake up in a bit and start shooting back at us. But it's more like for cinematic effect. They can't really hurt you. Though I feel like if you are if you screw it up, it could hurt you. So another thing which is random chance with this game, you know. Like, oh my goodness. Look at that. See, they start shooting and like a rocket launcher comes in at one point. Boom! So, you know, you just don't want to mess around with this. And now get the elevator really fast. Just so that the other guys don't get you. And now we're going to be entering the final section of this like level, which may also be probably one of the most hellish sections as well. This level does not let up. I am telling you, constant stress and anxiety at every single point. No rest, no love. Oh yeah, this game's main theme is about love, but I have no idea how the fuck it's about love. It's more about sense for Metal Gear Solid. Okay, crouch here and just pray that the bullets don't hit you, but crouch. Crouching is very important. If you like try to run through the standing, there is a chance that a stray bullet will hit you. But crouching like diminishes that chance a lot. And now we're gonna pretty much this is our cover for the entire fight. Now we're gonna slowly Oh yeah, there's gonna be a guy who comes in here. Sometimes it's two guys, but yeah. So when you first enter this area, like that one guy's gonna try to ambush you. And it might be two guys, but two guys never showed up. So um, it's only with this one guy for me, but just be careful because it might be two guys. So there's gonna be a guy way up there, way up there, and you don't want to be like too exposed because he can kind of get a straight bullet on you. But yeah, try to get the reticle like aimed on him and then start sniping at him. That's like the one. That's like the first guy you want to take care of because I swear, like every other time I've like tried to no damage the section, he's the guy who's like the the, the, the demon per se. So yeah, once you take that guy out, just slowly crouch your way around like every single like window vantage point. But make sure you're not too exposed because enemies can get you. So yeah, here's one guy here. We can kind of take him out with a tranquilizer. Also, remember there is a helicopter around here. And sometimes when the helicopter starts shooting missiles, you're going to want to get some space like that. Run away from your little vantage point. You should be fine, but run away from the vantage point. Oh my goodness, you, you have to. So yeah, here I'm, I'm trying to get the drop on these guys, but then at one point, like, this cover here is going to, like, disappear. And there, threw, he threw a grenade, but the grenade did not land inside the building. It was a smoke grenade, too, thankfully, so it wouldn't have damaged me. And now here's where Heaven's Divide starts playing. And I will say, uh, the this is the, like, my no commentary version is actually the first time that one of my videos had got copyright claimed, but I got to share my monetization. Every other time, it said the monetization was, like, illegible. Oh, that's that's the wrong word it was like it was like just not possible or in my video got blocked worldwide that only happened once for like my yakuza licensed music thing and i was able to deal with it but like for every other video it's like oh you can't monetize this at all but here is the first time i can share monetization however here i'm trying to talk a lot because if i talk over the like the copyrighted song like loudly enough it'll actually like not be seen as copyright so I can just talk a lot, like a lot, a lot, a lot. And maybe I won't get to share monetization. I'll just have all the monetization to myself. So yeah, here I'm slowly just crouching my way around the building. And then once I take out every single guard, this is where we enter a very long and, uh, long and prolonged fight with the helicopter. So pretty, uh, that was very risky. What you want to do is you want to wait for this helicopter to shoot its machine gun twice. Then you kind of go out there to shoot it. And then you kind of, you know, step back because it's going to start shooting missiles at you. And this is the entire fight. It kind of reminds me a bit of, like, the Metal Gear Solid 1 Stinger fight. But, you know, also, like, this may not be the most efficient way to take out the helicopter. Because once it shoots this missile, you may be able to step outside. However, when I experimented with that, this, like, helicopter reacts faster to you when you step outside. Also, there's periods where the helicopter will just straight up leave the battlefield for, like, a few seconds. Like, maybe 20 or 30, which drags this fight out a lot more. But it also gives me a safe chance to pick up extra ammunition because I will be needing extra ammunition. Because, like, the ammunition I have right now for, like, this uh, targeting missile is not going to be enough to take out this entire thing. I'm going to need extra bullets. So I'm able to call those extra bullets earlier. And also when he leaves the battlefield, like, a little later on, I can just walk out there. Because it is not safe at all to walk out there when he has the machine guns firing and also the, the missiles firing. It has to be during that one safe period where he's just dicking around somewhere else. That's when you pick up your missiles. Do not pick up your missile at any other point. It is not worth it. Now, if there is a more efficient way to no damage this boss fight, screw you. No one else has done it. And if someone else has done it, bravo to you, sir. Champion. But right now, I hold this crown. And if you want to challenge me, send me the video, dog. I will shout you out easily. Easily, dog. But seriously, I hate this so much, but this song is awesome. Heaven's Divide is such a great theme, and I'm glad they decided to use it in a combat encounter. Like, what a great way to make this. Like, it's kind of a great way to bring home, like, the climax of this all together. Also, I forgot to mention the, the smart thing this game does. So, in the previous main op, when you were sneaking through this building, you know, you were sneaking. But now you're backtracking through it, but for an action set piece. I think that's awesome. I think it's a really nice way to kind of use backtracking in a really smart way. So, yeah, 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 yeah.
Also, defeating this boss fight non-lethally is actually easier than defeating it lethally because lethally you don't really have many weapons which you can also like use the shield for. Like what, you can use a pistol but like shooting three shots of a pistol into an enemy is not going to kill them. Like I mean three shots of a trank pistol though will kill, will, will, will like put them to sleep always. But the pistol is not a guaranteed thing, it's a lot harder to kill an enemy than it is to put them to sleep while also using the shield. And also, like, the Uzi, I mean, yeah, you can use the shield while that, but, like, it, its aim is so indirect, and you can't really kill enemies as easily as you can put them to sleep with a Trank Pistol. So, yeah, non-lethally, this boss fight, like, this whole entire, like, main op is easier to non-lethal. Well, like, to, it's easier to no damage non-lethally than it is to, like, lethal everyone. I mean, if you use, like, a big weapon, like a huge machine gun, yeah, you can kill enemies, but you know what you can't do? Not take damage, because you can't use the shield. Same thing with the rocket launchers, it's just a very weird thing, it's just like, it'd be a lot more cumbersome to kill people than it is to put them to sleep, so yeah. That's this game's way of, like, forcing you to be non-lethal, it just makes the no damage easier. So yeah, we're just going through the motions here, where I'm trying to kill this boss fight here, and uh, the boss fight's gonna waste more time dicking around by going outside of the map, like, come on, man. I have, like, one final point on my outline which I want to talk about, but also I don't think I have enough time to talk about it, like, in its entirety before this mission ends or before, like, we reach, like, the next section of this mission, which is kind of like a, like a very short portion, but you need to be very careful to no damage because if you screw it up, you can screw it up really, really badly. So, yeah, here I think I believe I have killed this helicopter because you're going to hear it because the helicopter keeps blowing up over and over and it's like, ah! Ah, ah, and now that door over there is going to open so if you've taken out every single other enemy which i have you're gonna have like four final like dudes to deal with and i'm gonna throw a bunch of spoke grenades like preemptively just to like kind of stun them however i screw up my strategy and it becomes into a mad dash of like trying not to screw everything up like there's like four dudes here this dude ran up ahead and now like i'm gonna try to switch to a different weapon like the trank pistol to trank him but i take way too long and then like this dude keeps running at me like what's so now i'm trying to like like to kind of throw this guy over and it's like oh my god okay, i'm gonna shoot him that's like, ah! now i have to throw this guy over but that guy over there has a machine gun block him immediately because like, ah! like oh my god i have to block the pistol like it's so stressful but like, i could have screwed that up so easily if i did not immediately block his shots and now okay there's two guys over there that i think they're still kind of stunned by the smoke so like, i'm gonna try to trank them you know right right you know, Trank there, Trank there, you know, nice, okay, I'm missing a few shots, that doesn't really matter much, right? Just kind of, a few more times, you know, Trank him a few more times, Trank him a few more times, stop missing, Trank him a few more times, Trank him a few more times, come on, man, keep tranking him, keep tracking. Ah! Like, bro, what the f- did you see that? Did you see that? I literally dodged that by a split hair on my ass, dude, what are you talking about? So I literally walked away from the rocket launcher, dude, that, that literally could have ruined my entire run, but it didn't, and believe me, I screamed just as hard as that when I was doing this in person, on the time, like, you know, in the moment, seriously, oh, <laughs> It's definitely my proudest achievement with this game to no damage this section besides the robots, but it was hell, it took like two days, and oh. Oh, I should probably mention, like, this video is being released like four days after my Metal Gear Solid 4 one, because every single other section is really easy. I was able to do like 70% of like the main ops, like, in the first day I was like trying to like no damage this game because it was just that easy. But once I reached this section, this section took like nearly an entire day. And then after that, we have Peace Walker. And then the thing with Peace Walker is that I had to grind to get new weapons. Because, like, the weapons I have now are not good enough to, like, take it out quickly. Like, okay. I barely remember the weapons I had. But, like, for this entire previous section, for, like, all the previous main ops, I think I had weapons. Like, yeah, here we go. It's really disappointing. I have an A rank. It's really sad. You know, but whatever, whatever. But besides the fact that I got an A rank here, like, I think, like, my previous explosive weapons were, like, a level 3 Carl, I don't know how to pronounce that, a level 3, like, F -M, like F I M, a level, like, 2, a, le a level 2 like, RPG, and, yeah, but now, for this boss fight in particular, I upgraded my, uh, Carl Gustavo or whatever to, like, a level 4, and my RPG to a level 3. And the reason I did that is because, okay, look at this. With two rockets, I take out one health bar. However, with the previous with the previous weapons, it took like four rockets. And that would just get insanely grueling. Like this, oh my god. It was hard to do it with these upgraded weapons. It would have been nearly impossible with like my non-upgraded weapons. And this fight in particular, oh yeah, here I have, I have the naked camo just because, well, when you call a support marker, it only gives you ammo for two weapons. So, like, with a fight like this, what's the point in having a third weapon if I'm just going to be relying on these two weapons? So, you know, might as well just go naked with it, right? I'll get ammo for these two weapons every time I call Supply Marker, and I'll be nice. So, yeah, 
Uh, the worst part about this fight is the jumps. It's like, commencing jump now. It could fuck you over so easily. Like, you could just be like, oh, commencing jump now. It'll jump exactly to where you are and stomp you. But sometimes it won't stomp you. And also, like, this thing's enemy, this thing's patterns will heavily dictate whether you can no damage it or not. Because sometimes it'll start jumping around, damaging you at every point. Or sometimes it'll start walking behind the buildings or, start, or it'll start getting to, like, these positions, which are really convenient to kind of, like, get free damage on it. Like, pretty much, you just, you just want an enemy pattern where this thing is not jumping around. Now, every other attack that this thing does is honestly pretty easy to avoid. The S-Mines can be very frustrating because, once again, they have a bit of a random element to them if you don't shoot them down. Like, like you really want this thing... Oh, you really want Peace Walker to, con to consistently enter nuclear launch sequences because it means free damage, basically. You've got to stop peace. And also, it's a nice time to call Support Marker to get more ammo. Now the drill missiles, they'll like burrow into the ground and then they'll like come up afterwards. So you just want to keep running, have a, const have a constant motion so that you're never in danger of being hit by the drill missiles. Not too hard to avoid, but if you stand still, they can catch you off guard. Though to be fair, there are other ways to avoid the drill missiles. Like you could just shoot them like before they enter the ground, but I did not bring any machine guns with me. It's all rocket launchers here. Maybe if I brought like a my battle suit, I could have my third weapon be a machine gun. Dude, feel like I'm never gonna like I'm I'm not gonna run out of ammo for the machine gun just by shooting like the drill missiles and rockets. But to be fair, I could avoid them just fine by running around. But you know the machine gun could have helped with the S mines. So if you want like a better no damage, like but if you want like to have a more consistent no damage, uh, get the battle suit. You know, have a machine gun on the side to take out the S mines. And now here it's gonna enter a point where like if you shoot a rocket at it, it's gonna blow it away. However, getting a with a chaff grenade, it can completely bypass this. So yeah. Rocket, then switch to your other rocket. Boom, because you can't. You don't have enough time. I believe you don't. I don't. I believe you don't have enough time to shoot two rockets like reloaded. So instead, one rocket, then shoots the other weapon, and you know make sure they're both reloaded before she enters this whole, you know, like shooting rockets away with their EM pulse maximum thing. And now she's at one point she's gonna start running at you like a little horse. No, a fucking massive horse. And at this point, just stick to these corners here. Maybe roll here for safety, and you should be mostly fine. Just, you know, be close to that. And now there's going to be a point where she enters a phase where she stands up and, like, starts shooting fire piss. Uh, I don't think this is that point. Yeah, jump engaged. It could be so deadly whether she's going to, like, jump on you or jump to an actual... This is a this is a phase which I really want her to do. I always want her to be kind of on the outside of me because she'll, like, really slowly come to this area. Like, honestly, during this point, I could probably call a supply marker and get stuff. But, yeah. Like, it'll be... We can kind of wait here and also be really close here because most of the time she'll do a jump to kind of face you or to enter a nuclear launch sequence which once again free damage let's go however to be fair when she's doing a nuclear launch sequence you're not always safe because she'll be shooting the rockets but the rockets are pretty easy to avoid just keep walking in a straight direction somewhere and you should be mostly fine to avoid them you know get a nice shot here now here i'm playing it kind of risky because the rpgs are not dealing that much damage so she's not getting like knocked out of it so thankfully with my last two rpgs I do manage to knock her out of it, but you know, it's like, oh, it's scary, because like, oh, we don't got that many seconds, man, we don't got many seconds, and also firing rocket launcher, that's gonna waste time, oh man, oh dear, but this is probably like, the, this is something you really want Peace Walker to do, as long as you have the weapons to deal with Peace Walker, because if you do not have the weapons to deal with Peace Walker, then this becomes hell, hell, hell. And also, like, find smart place, find smart times to throw supply markers. Because, you know, you could throw a supply marker and then she goes, jump, engage. And then she'll jump immediately, like, on top of where you called the supplies. And that can screw you over very, very easily. Like, oh my goodness. Also, might I mention, Peace Walker's sound, like, boss theme is, is amazing. It's, like, just a, such a climactic, like, triumphant theme. And, like, they use it as the menu music. As kind of like the menu music when you're getting prepared for a mission in the Phantom Pain, and it fits really well there too. So yeah, just on a really great track. Oh, Peace Walker soundtrack as a whole, I don't know how to like describe it, really. I mean, I think Snake Eater soundtrack is probably still my favorite, but like this is pretty swag stuff, I'd say. Though I guess like this boss fight track theme in particular is really hitting it for me. Though I don't really know how to judge all the motifs and stuff here, because I don't really know what motifs we're working with here for the compositions in this game. Jump engage. Oh yeah, jump engage. You, you never know, man. You never know what to expect with the jump engage stuff. Hopefully she just does that. But if she jumps onto the field, oh dear, oh dear. I just, I don't know how to predict it. I don't know what strategy like you take to like avoid her jumping to like screw you over. It's just, it's random. Like to me, it's random. Maybe there is like a pattern to it, but I have zero clue, man. I just, I don't know. 
Sometimes she'll take up this position, which is a little rant, which is a little annoying, because she'll just shoot rockets from here. Oh no! Jump! 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 Ah! Oh no! Thankfully, she's initializing a shield long sequence, which is free damage for me. Very nice. Very nice. And yeah, I was able to switch between the two weapons very nice. And now here, I believe she's gonna go for the pissing mode. No, here she's gonna go for the pissing mode, I believe. There we go. Ah, uh, the fire piss and the S mines. Now, this phase should be easy. I don't know, usually the way I deal with it is just by standing in this corner, but the, those S mines, man, they can screw you over. You don't know, like, it's a little random. Like sometimes when the S mine goes out, I, try, I dodge to like avoid it, but I don't even know if that does anything. But yeah, just kind of stay in a corner and just pray that those S mines do not screw you over. But that's pretty much like my only strategy for like this walking phase here. Though to be fair, with the S mines, you know, pull out that little machine gun if you decided to bring a machine gun and take them out. But I did not, so I'm just I'm depending on random chance here. Now I'm gonna try to get more supplies. Hopefully she doesn't jump straight in my face like that. Oh. <laughs> also, if you're too close to like Peace Walker, she'll do the she'll do either this laser thing or the flamethrower thing. Very dangerous stuff. Watch out for both. And now here, I'm going to try to get the ammo. Oh, it's a little too close, but now I'm going to go back for it. Very nice, very nice. And I'll have to switch between weapons. And the weapon switching system can be really dangerous when you're trying to run away from the flamethrower. Ah. <laughs> this, oh, it's a really stressful fight, though. I do think it's a pretty well-designed fight. Oh, it's pretty challenging. It's got a lot of things going on, but for no damage. Oh, my goodness, the jumps. Oh, and also, if you're a little close to her, she'll try to stomp you with a big robot boot. <laughs> Is the thing is hiding in corners won't always save you from like her jumps because she'll sometimes jump straight into the corners. So it's just like uh, it's just you. I don't know how to deal with it. I don't know how to deal with her random ass jumps. You just have to pray that you get like the good jumps that don't screw you over. Uh, and now there we go. Peace Walker, no damaged. I believe I'm the only one who's done this because I have not seen any other documented attempts of someone no damaging Peace Walker. It's what it is what it is now something weird's gonna happen like the next main op is gonna be you just mercilessly beating this thing to a pulp which is kind of like the story thematic purpose of it but they could have just included that into this first mission though i guess the developers were scared that they didn't want to drag out the main op too much but i feel it would have worked better in that context than just a isolated main op where you just mercilessly like beat the shit out of this it could have been a better climax just a weird little thing so yeah anyways while we're wasting time here uh pretty much destroying this thing's ai which is a big reference to 2001 a space odyssey where hal was like meticulously taking out memory boards from like hal's memory thing to like destroy its ai so that the peace walker uh it likes movies so Deo kojima he likes ripping off movies i mean there's a lot of influences from Escape from New York. I mean, one of the characters in this game is literally called Dr. Strangelove. I mean, it's pretty blatant stuff. But yeah, we're here. So while we're here, I'm going to complain about Peace Walkers. So, so like, Metal Gear Solid in general has has had has always had issues with the second half. And Snake Eater is probably one of the only games to avoid the issue. Like, Peace Walker... Like, Snake Eater is probably one of the only games to avoid that issue, but Peace Walker is a strange case because in Main Ops 1 through 26, we have a solid Metal Gear Solid journey, which doesn't have a lame second half like the other games, but then we have the rest of the Main Ops for the true ending, which is the last wet fart of the game. You just revisit previous areas at night with slightly different enemy patterns, but not enough to be that different while trying to find the other lame villain from Peace Walker multiple times. In my video, I breezed through these missions quite fast, but the actual playthrough requires you to do multiple extra ops in order to unlock the next one, and it is such a tiring, boring process, and this is probably where Peace Walker drops the ball with its second half, but it's also optional? It's post-game content, so maybe I'm not supposed to be that harsh with it, but it really does fit that structure of dropping the ball with the second half. Also, I find myself hating this section because the true ending is complete ass. Yes, pass, please regurgitate. Bi yes, pass, please regurgitate Big Boss's entire speech from Metal Gear Solid 4. Yes, you go, Queen. Big Boss said all that stuff in 4 because he had decades upon decades of context to see the bigger picture after it was all said and done. But here's Pass, Pass saying the same shit because she just knows better? Here's that annoying ass prequel thing where simple things just have to have an over explanation. Have to have an over explanation like nah, Big Boss didn't think those things. It was actually Pass who told, who told her, who, no, who told him. 
And then he remembered it later on. Oh, wow. So cool. Deja vu. Fuck off, Kojima. This is the part of the Metal Gear Solid series where Kojima is trying to retroactively justify that shitty ass twist in 4 so that if you play the games in chronological order, maybe that reveal in Act 3 won't be the dumbest fucking thing you've ever heard of. And the way it's done here is just insufferable. However, the one saving grace of the true ending is Big Boss's final speech, which is a great cap off for the game, you know, fully cementing Big Boss as the warmongering villain of the future games. Also, it is quite clever on how the more you build Zeke up, the harder the final boss is. It's like you're being punished for spending more time trying to build a nuclear weapon. That's kind of that, you know, subtle insidiousness of the game. Very nice, very nice. Uh, so yeah, that was, that's pretty much like my whole outline. So yeah. Oh, we're at the part where I'm beating Peace Walker to a merciless pulp, so I'll talk about a different topic while we're here. So, uh, the best is yet to come is still probably the best vocal track of the series. Like, you know, the other tracks are really fantastic, you know, uh, saying goodbye to yesterday is really great. Though maybe a little cheesy, because, you know, and like, some of the cheese factor of some of the later songs might come from the fact that I understand English, but I don't understand the language which, uh, the Metal Gear Solid song is sang in. So like uh, the cheesiness of that song is kind of lost on me, but for the other games, eh, the English makes it a little cheesy. But then when we get to like Japanese, I don't know, Poss's song here, well, well not here, it comes way later during her boss fight. Like they kind of have a chance to kind of have that element of, you know, oh, I don't understand the language. This song won't be that cheesy, right? But the thing that brings down like the Love Deterrence song is that it's so freaking peppy, dude. It's like a pop idol song, you know, like, whoa, let's go. So. It doesn't really hold the same weight that like the best is yet to come has in Metal Gear Solid 1. It's kind of like a goofy little thing they added, but to be fair, I do still really like the inclusion of that song during that boss fight. It gives it really unique and like, you know, strong energy to it. Cause it's like, like I mean, the boss fight itself kind of comes out of like nowhere. Cause it's like, whoa, what, we're gonna fight this thing? No! And then like this song comes out of nowhere, it fits really well. However, it's kind of disappointing cause like the cutscene before you fight Zeke kind of has like this song, which sounds very similar to like the song you hear like uh, during Metal Gear Solid 2's like kind of infamous like final chapter, which is really spooky. And there's like, a, ah! like I don't know, it has like that kind of sound, but then like the actual boss track is just a peppy pop idol song. And the thing is, I mean, there's more to it than that because the singer of that song is also like the Japanese voice actress of Paz. So it's kind of like, whoa, she's singing the song. But in English, that's kind of lost because the person, because the person, we didn't exactly dub that song. And to be fair, I wouldn't want them to dub that song. I prefer it being in its original Japanese, but like, <laughs> I mean, Terra's song can sing. I mean, yeah, Terra, Terra Strong is the person who voices Paz and also a hundred other characters. she just be like that. But yeah, just a lot going on in that fight and we're not even there yet. There's still like 30 minutes before we get there. But yeah, we were just beating Peace Walker to death. Kind of how Ano Kojima has kind of beaten Big Boss to death. You know, beating that little horse there. Very big horse. Oh yeah, here's something which happens. So at the end of like this false ending here, we kind of have this loading screen where a bunch of peace signs show up, which is kind of similar to what happens in the story. That's a cool little detail. I like that. So yeah, what I'm trying to say is that the best is yet to come is probably the Metal Gear Solid song, which I can take the most seriously out of all of them. But I still love every single other vocal track. The best, like, saying goodbye to yesterday, amazing. Snake Eater, amazing. Calling to the Night, amazing. Did 4 have one? Huh? 4 had, like, instrumental songs, but no vocals. I mean, no, it had, it had a Here's to You at the very end. I, I like that inclusion a lot. Uh... Heaven's Divide, amazing. Sins of the Father, amazing. But the best is yet to come, I still think is like the, my favorite out of all of them still to this day. So yeah, here we've entered the wet fart portion of the game where we're just kind of chasing Zadornov over and over and over. And it's pretty much just revisiting, revisiting old areas, but again. And now for this first Zadornov mission, I am very, very unsure if like his like placement is random. Because like the way some guys describe it, it is random. But, I don't know, like, if you show up in a certain place, maybe he'll have a chance to always spawn there, but maybe he won't. Like, I don't know, I mean, the way this, this is, like, the game asks you to approach this air, this section is pretty open. Because it's like, oh, he, he's somewhere here, go find him. And I'll usually, like, the first instinct is just to go to, like, the last part of the level. Like, he's, he's gotta be there, right? Though that isn't always true. Oh, yeah, so here, uh, as you can see, like, the Metal Gear Solid 2, like, detection thing happens, where if you kind of run... 
like in front of his cone of vision, he'll get suspicious, but he won't cause an alert. So, you know, they brought that from Metal Gear Solid 2, but it's been heavily nerfed. But thankfully for me, Zadoranov shows up in this section of the level. And now what I'm trying to do here is I'm using the Soliton radar to find him. Because pretty much like the way you find him is you pretty much activate the Soliton radar and like the one red uh, little arrow which shows up which doesn't have a, a, like a field of vision and also isn't one of the people you held up, that's where Zadoranov is. So yeah, uh, if I see him on the map, I'll point him out. Uh, I don't know. I mean, I'm also using this to pretty much look at these guards' cone divisions, like right there. Freeze. Like, look at that. Those cone divisions are even shorter than the Metal Gear Solid Metal Gear Solid One ones. The Metal Gear Solid PS One ones. You know, like man. Oh my goodness. So yeah, you see that one red arrow in that one box? That's where the doorknob is. So yeah, using the Salton radar, you can Freeze. find them like that. Now, using other methods to find them, yeah, there's ways. But the Salt on Radar is very useful for this post-game section. And hell, at least for these missions, it makes sense for me to use the, like, the Salt on Radar because we are in the post-game where I probably would have developed it. So yeah, once you take out the door and off, you don't want to go there. You want to go to a recovery point right next to him. <laughs> so yeah, this, this recovery point thing only really shows up during the extra ops. But these main ops are kind of like extra ops. But they're also mandatory to get the true ending. And the true ending has an extra boss fight. So it's like, man... I'm going to consider this part of the second half. I mean, I've complained about it before. I did the whole rant. But also, to be fair, I mean, using that logic, the Monster Hunter boss fights should also be mandatory. Because, hey, they're boss fights with different movesets. I need to fight them in the main ops. But I really like that those fights are, like, you know, relegated to extra ops. You know, like, the whole thing where you're building up Zeke and, like, the more you build it up, the harder the final boss fight is. I mean, that's a really clever thing. I, I like that. You know, it, it catches you way off guard. It's a, it's a good twist. So yeah, anyways, here, run all the way over here. Hold that hold that person up. And you should be fine to also run away all, all the way over here. And also, the Sonic guy is very useful for catching guards up. Also, something which I have not mentioned yet. So, if you, like, hold up, if you, like, you know, like hold up your weapon like and you're not and you're far away from the guard uh they're not gonna you're not gonna go freeze you have to be like straight like in front of their back and then they'll go freeze so yeah zadornoff's gonna be hiding behind this log here Break this is actually down. one of the shorter zadornoff missions thankfully i mean there's two very short ones and this is one of them so yeah it's over but yeah like i mean you do not want to like have your like weapon held up and then approach a guard you want to like be straight behind that guard and then hold the weapon up then you'll say freeze. Just remember that because it can screw you over if you mess it up. The extra ops are pretty much kind of like the VR missions and the alternate missions in Metal Gear Solid 2, but it's like, they also have the same issues that those missions have, though. The, I say, like, Peace Walker is a better version of what, the, like, the VR missions and the alternate missions are trying to do. Like, they feel a little more substantial, but it's still, uh, like, they pad out a lot of things, like, a lot, a lot. And it's mostly, like, Peace Walker's main issue is those tank and helicopter battles. Good, goodness. And also, like I mentioned before, that in the extra ops, you can fight harder versions of, like, previous boss fights, like the Pupa, the Colossus. So, there'll be, like, kind of multiple levels to this. There'll be, like, the Reborn versions, then, like, the Red Skull versions. And, you know, as they get harder and harder, their health bars get longer and longer. So, it's like, hey, you remember how frustrating it was to fight those things for the first time? Relive that experience with these harder variants. It's like, all right. Okay, to be fair, Monster Hunter also does that. They'll introduce harder variants of the same enemy and maybe introduce a few new elements to their like, fight, like I don't know, give them a bit of poison here and there, and those things get very annoying. Oh my goodness. Like, I have nightmares of the blue Raffalos from like Monster Hunter 4 like, Ultimate. I mean, no damaging a Monster Hunter game would be sick, but it would also be the biggest time commitment of my life. Because it's like... Beating those games normally, every single boss fight, just normally, not even no damage, will take like 300 to 500 hours. So how the fuck am I going to no damage that and also commentate over everything? I mean, the, I'm, I'm getting ahead of myself with the whole commentate over everything thing. No damaging the entire game in general, because the entire game is boss fights. You literally, you go to someone, you ask to fight a boss, and you fight a boss. That's the entire game, and like that's the appeal of it. But also, like, dude, dude. 
that's a lot of that's a lot of boss fights. It's just not possible. It's just not gonna be possible, man. <laughs> like, I mean, there was a video of someone no damaging every single boss fight in Monster Hunter World. The video is like six to seven hours. That's one of the shorter Monster Hunter games. I don't mean I don't know. What I hear from the community is that it's probably one of the shortest. So like, Monster Hunter Four is like one of the longest. <laughs> You know how it is. Oh, yeah, I never, ever mentioned this before throughout this walkthrough, but my name throughout this entire walkthrough is Man. Man. And I think that's the emotion that, some, like, Main Ops 24 brought to the table. Like, man. Yeah, so here's a sniper. Just gonna use some smoke grenade to get past him. Oh, yeah, this is the... Is it? I don't know. I don't know, actually. I don't know if I have to do any backtracking for this area in particular. No, no, you don't got to do no backtracking. So, yeah, I'm just going to smoke that guard up. Oh, yeah, one thing you're going to want to do is you're going to want to hold up guards while oh they're being God. smoked. Because if you let them just be smoked and try to enter the next area, there is a possibility that, uh, there is a good possibility that, like, they'll go into a caution alert and that caution alert will follow you in the next area and you do not want that. So just avoid a caution alert when you're trying to transition between areas as much as possible. Do not just smoke enemies. Also make sure that you, like, hold them up so that they're not they're a non-threat, so that they don't cause a caution alert while you're trying to transition to the next area. Just keep that in mind. So for this mission in particular, I'm pretty sure he's, like, at the final area. Though I don't know if it's random. I don't know if he, like, spawns earlier or later. It's like, I don't know, those door and off missions are weird. Like, they're very open-ended, but they're also just exploring the same areas you've explored previously, but at night. I mean, it being at night is cool, but, like, bro, I already did this. Get out of here. Thankfully, we're at the point where the Soliton radar would be in your inventory. So even if you're not doing New Game Plus, you should probably have the Soliton radar as long as you've been developing Mother Base. I mean, I don't know if it's, I don't even know if it's called Mother Base in this game. I mean, no, M MSF yada yada whatever so yeah another sniper there so another smoke grenade there and yep yeah. here i'm gonna be confused on how to get through it but yep yeah, here you can you have to actually go through here you don't climb up there oh i think i'm actually screwed up here because he yeah there we go uh oh do not call reinforcements man oh thankfully he does not okay that's good and here i'm gonna make this guy freeze too very nice very nice Wait, what else am I going to do? Oh, I think I'm just using the Soliton radar to, like, pretty much sco scour this area, see if there's anyone I miss, because, you know, Zdorodov might be here. Like, I mean, I tried to enter these areas without really much of a guide. I mean, I kind of, I had a little bit of a guide, I won't lie, but, like, it's still kind of like, hmm, is he here? Is he there? Like, it's kind of hard to make out. But for this mission in particular, he should be here. So I believe I may have noticed that he's on the left side because there was like one uh, red arrow which was just standing still by itself. Yeah, just kind of holding up all the guards while I'm at it. Very useful stuff. And also the Salton radar has a very low battery life, so that's why I'm kind of flipping it on and off. You can also upgrade the Salton radar, but to be fair, I was also doing that while trying to upgrade the... Uh, Rocket launcher. Oh yeah, another thing I did. So, I actually did the Peace Walker and like the Zeke missions last because I was waiting for my rocket launcher to develop. So while I was waiting for my rocket launcher to develop, I did the Zadornov missions because you know as I do those missions, the weapons develop. Though the thing is, like every mission I did, I mean, if I've already beaten this entire game, but every mission I did only increased that stuff by like five or ten percent or like seven. 10 is generous, so it, I mean, the, after I was done with all the Zordoff missions, you know, I no damaged all of them. They were an absolute breeze. I did them in like 20 minutes, but like after I did that, <laughs> I still had to develop those weapons. So I just kept replaying that one mission. You don't remember that one mission kind of near the mine shack or whatever that took me less than a minute to beat? I just kept replaying that mission over and over because it was like the, the, the shortest one to kind of grind out like that weapon development because like doing the side the extra ops was not going to work for me because like the extra ops i had were like the super challenging ones like the tank ones and i had like i needed to get new weapons for those so it's like man man oh, yeah so i've been in this game twice actually one uh, three times actually once on the xbox 360 
a second time on the PS Vita and a third time on the PS3. And like the save file I'm using is the one from the PS3 because I tried to like I tried to platinum this game, but then once I realized how grueling the extra. Oh my god! What? No. My Splinter Cell days have come back to haunt me. I don't know, my Splinter Cell videos, sometimes, like, I would be kind of sloppy with my editing. And then I would include, like, some of my failed attempts while trying to do my no-damage attempts. And now it has come back to haunt me during the wet fart section. Oh, dear. So, yeah, as you can see there, it's probably not for the best that you run up there. It's much better if you just throw a smoke grenade there to disorient them. So, yeah, don't repeat the mistake I just did. Only learn from, uh, only learn my successes, never my failures. No, failures, you learn a lot from failures. Failures is how you get to success. Never mind. Ignore that. But yeah, as I was saying, so since I've beaten it three times, I've had many different names. And uh, two stick out in my mind. We have a uh, man here. But then the next one, which uh, is the one I used on my PSP, is Ethan Bradbury. Do y'all remember that? Do y'all remember Ethan Bradbury? Ethan Bradbury? So yeah, I named myself Ethan Bradbury for the entirety of my PS Vita Peace Walker walkthrough. And playing it on PS Vita wasn't too bad. I mean, to be fair, I was kind of playing it during a time where I did not care at all about no damages. So I don't know about any like technical things, which would have been harder to do, like on the PSP handheld. PS, no, not PSP, PS Vita handheld, because I did not play it on PSP. I downloaded the digital copy on the PS Vita, and it worked pretty well. And also, this game's just nice, portable, because, you know, you have these really short missions. You just kind of, you know, bust them out every now and then, and also just kind of slowly build up Mother Base while you're on a car ride. You know, like, oh, let me go grind some more soldiers. You know, that'd be nice. Oh, let me do a few extra ops. That'll be nice. You know, just kind of do Great that job. as you're playing the game, and it's, you know, it's, it's cool. It's cool. Now, for this mission, uh, finding Zoranoff is actually very straightforward. It's pretty much way, no, 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 it isn't. Wait, no, wait, yeah, yes it is, yes it is. Uh, I mean, maybe it is. What I believe you have to do is just, he's gonna be in one of these houses. So it's kind of a repeat of the Chico situation. So it's kind of a neat way to bring that little challenge back. You know, so like, sometimes throughout these areas, they'll like, replace guards. And that changes the dynamic a bit, but not by much. But yeah, just like, go to these blue doors and pretty much check where this dude is. And I don't really know where he is, so I'm just going to look at all these. Because the Soliton radar really is not giving me a good insight into where these dudes could be, where this dude could be hiding. It's just kind of like, oh, here's some blue doors, and that's pretty much it. So yeah, here, another smoke grenade. Hey! Oh, the, the arcs for the smoke grenade are really weird. Because uh, once you throw a smoke grenade, like the same arc of before will be there, but you changed your arc. So it's like, what's going on with that? Just a little PSP baggage, I guess. I don't know. So here I'm trying to figure out if the doorknob's there. Gotcha. Hey, <laughs> he is there. Nice, nice. Curses. When you're seeing these missions back to back, they don't seem all that bad. Like, oh, right, they're kind of a nice re like revisit of like the previous areas. But the thing is, between every mission, I said this before, you have to do like a bunch of like extra ops. Like, I don't know, like for to unlock the second one, to unlock like the second Zadornov search mission, you need to do like two or three extra ops. The third one, like four or five, and then it just kind of increases from there. I actually don't know how many you have to do. I think the max it goes is like six, but I'm not even sure about that. But it grinds. The post game grinds so hard. <laughs> and then there's the post post game, which is 100%ing it, and I, I'm just not brave enough for it. Like, maybe I'll return to it someday, but I just am not interested at all. Like, my version of no damaging a game is doing the. No, my version of 100%ing a game is just doing these no damage challenges, because I'm just not interested in, like, 100% in general. So, yeah, here I think I made a mistake because I. Oh, no. I was able to avoid it, because, like, the thing is. Uh, I threw a smoke grenade, but thankfully he did not cause an alert. I guess the smoke lasted a long time. Also, I upgraded my smoke grenade before this, so my smoke is now blue. See, so yeah, I hear there's going to be a guard in front of you. Smoke grenade. Uh, what was I going to say before that? I, I don't know, maybe I forgot. I don't know. Freeze. Oh, yeah, this mission is really simple pretty much just reach the end and then you'll have to repeat the whole truck thing and yeah I, it's better if you just get the right truck at the very beginning because you do not want to fail cutscene interaction because this is actually one of the longer missions because you have to do it all in like one go and it's like a bunch of areas back to back like 
you know, it's one of the more demanding ones. So to fail it because of a cutscene interaction, don't 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 do it, man. So yeah, I just like uh the finding the right truck is really easy because the number is like very distinct from like the other numbers there. So yeah, for this area, there's gonna be a guard there. So smoke grenade. There's actually like four guards, and there's one guard in the place where I didn't think he'd be. Yeah, smoke grenade right there. And then I'm just gonna knock this guy out. Boom. Hold up. Very nice. That's how I played this entire game so far. Smoke. CQC, hold up. And now here, I guess I'm going to walk around the side to get this guy. Though so he'll turn around. So I'm putting there's going to be another guy there. So those things are the same. That's cool. And then there's an extra guy, like, kind of climbing up there. Though I don't really need to hold them up. I can kind of just move on and not get him. But I decided, you know what? I'm going to get him. So, yeah, I'm just going to go all the way over here. Or not. Oh, yeah, I'm going back. I'm going back. It wastes time, but you know what? I'm still going to get the S rank for this mission, so I'm going to go all the way over here and get this guy. Boom. And pick up some extra tranquilizer ammo, though I'm not really going to be using it. So yeah, now this part can be very complicated. I'd say they made it harder than before. So you have one enemy there, then you have a lot of enemies up there. And the way they're positioned is actually a little bit harder to deal with. Yeah, instead of doing what I did before, I'm going to adopt a new strategy. I don't know if I could do the same thing that I did before. I mean, I probably could. But I decided to get a little more experimental and start just smoking everyone out. So yeah, smoke, smoke, smoke. And also, I'm, I'm going to have to take this guy out at some point. <laughs> so yeah, there we go. And yeah, switching to yep, banana. Don't get up. So yeah, now there's a bunch of smoke. I'm assuming those guys can't see me, and it worked pretty well. Also, uh, before I go up there, I'm going to, you know, equip the Soliton radar just to know what their fields of vision are before. So yeah, here we have, like, it's very, like, weird, like, visions. And I, I almost get screwed, but I save myself in, like, the nick of time. Like, here we go. So hold that guy up, and then for some reason that guy saw me, but I'm assuming CQC, drop him on the ground, hold him up. And then there's, like, a guy right there who also didn't see me. Very nice. I hold him up, and then boom. And I don't, I forget if there's someone at the bottom here. Yeah, yeah, there is. So there's, like, a lot of enemies packed in this area compared to the last time. So we can kind of catch you off guard, but boom, we're done. And now we're going to choose, like, the, like the, the very distinct number out of all the other, like, number plates. <laughs> Guys, I'm inside the facility. There's rows and rows of trucks here. Zadornov should be somewhere in that area. Find him! Not that, not that, not that, that. Choose that and you will find Zadornov. You found me. Oh yeah, this dude is voiced by Steve Bloom and he gives a really great performance, but it's just that the villain's boring. Besides his, like, rocket arm, which is pretty awesome, he's pretty lame. Now, this next Adornoff mission is also going to be very short, just like the level that it's based on. But, yeah. I'm actually going to start exploring up upstairs here just because I, I like that you can climb up these buildings. And also, there's an Assassin's Creed reference here. Not the first that this series has done. It has referenced it in Metal Gear Solid 4 by allowing you to be Altair. You can watch my Metal Gear Solid 4 no damage to see me be Altair. But yeah, so Zodornov is going to be in a love box, but not this one in particular. So I thought he would be there, but he's not. He's in another one. Actually... Is he going to be in a love box in this level? I don't know. I forget. I think I got tricked a little bit. But then there's an enemy right there. So I'm going to do a little bit of smoking there. Oh, yeah. So at a later point in this game, like, I don't know. There's a certain point in this game where enemies just start adopting helmets. And I think it's really cool. Like, I don't know. I mean, uh, it's like, oh, you can get headshots in the beginning. But then later on, you're, you're going to have to shoot the helmet off. And when you shoot the helmet off, it puts them to a caution state immediately. So you have to, like, immediately get a headshot off to that. That's a little more challenge, though, with the tranquilizer still stupid OP. And besides that, you can just get a bunch of body shots and get the same effect. Like, honestly, with these early enemies, you can do two body shots and it will have the same effect as, like, you know, the headshot. Because, you know, one shot for the helmet and one shot for the head. Just do two body shots and you'll get the same. So, yeah. Hold up, hold up, hold up. 
And now here we go. Here's the guy. Yeah, he was going to be in a love box. And he's pretty much like at the end of like the level where you would be previously. And just like the previous level, it does not take much time at all to get to him. Mission complete. Great job. And here's Zeke with the lovely music, which if I don't keep talking over it, I'm going to have to share my copyright music. <laughs> so yeah, here, uh, she's going to start shooting machine guns a lot of time. And look at my robot. This one looks so swag. Look at the like the like, nice blue and pink color scheme. It looks as goofy as the song that's included here. And also as my pants. Very nice. Oh, God. No, I'm, I'm, I'm channeling the Nostalgia Critic, aren't I? I guess every online creator has channeled the Nostalgia Critic at one point. Oh, my goodness. So yeah, I keep running to like avoid the machine gun fire and then try try to get a shot in when she stops but to be fair make sure that it's very fast because if it's not very fast like the machine gun fire will get you, you just like it's a very hard thing to avoid and you get some distance but keep running 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 to avoid the machine gun fire and then at one point pause is going to run over here when she runs over here go to this control panel here activate it and then kind of press yourself up against the wall and kind of target her and then you once you target her and also when if she's if she's on the right platform you have to go to the left control panel if she's on the left platform you have to go to the right control panel so yeah that's pretty much how you handle it and pretty much uh, that'll deal some good extra damage. And then once you deal that good extra damage, then she'll go to attack those gun platforms. There's also another like, like bout of like free extra damage. And also to get extra materials, go to this blue control panel over here. And I hope that my explanation is making this all is making sense. I mean, there's still some random elements to this fight, but I don't think it's as hard as Peace Walkers. And also one thing which I did is I did not give this boss fight any extra armor. To be fair, that's because I did not grind any extra armor from like grinding the other fight. So yeah, once you call like that little support platform, it'll drop ammo here and then at the top of the stage over there. So yeah, now once she's here, get some distance and just kind of keep running, keep running. But now she jumped all the way back there, so now we have to go to the other control panel to kind of shoot. However, another thing you can do is you just keep shooting your rockets at her while she's over there. That's also another good way to deal damage. And thankfully, she has such little health because I did not give her any extra armor plating. I gave her the railgun, I gave her the jetpack. There was one thing which I did not give her because I just did not have it with me. And, you know, why give her something that's going to make her harder? But, you know, at the very least, I did give her the, the little railgun. And now, yep. Now that's a little missile's there, and now she's gonna go attack the things over there, and thankfully she's almost about to die. And this song is so awesome, you're like, da -da 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 -da. like let's go, let's go, let's go. And yeah, I have my shield with me, to be fair, I don't, it's kind of more for a dormant than anything else, but maybe when she's shooting machine gun fire, sometimes it'll bounce off, sometimes, you know, like that little, like, extra chance of luck is something I'm gonna take with me, but I don't think it actually helps at all. <laughs> But yeah, we're just uh, shooting rockets, shooting rockets, and also now that I ran out of rockets, gonna pick up that ammo, which I uh, got before, very nice, the music is going hard, I'm trying to talk a lot, so that the music does not get me, like, shared copyright, I'm trying to get all that monetization to myself, but yeah, yeah, oh my god, this attack, it can be super random, I don't know, sometimes you'll try to dodge it, but like, her, like, her, like, freaking width is so large, that it's just gonna be impossible, sometimes you just have to take the L on that, but thankfully I did not take the L on that, and now we're going to kill this robot, and it's going to end this fight, it's also gonna end my Peace Walker no damage, yeah, thank you for watching, uh, I'm actually pretty glad that I was able to no damage every single, like, main op, except for the torture, but that was mandatory, so who cares, everything else is purely skill-based, and to be fair, this game is mostly easy, aside from main ops, 24 to no damage, Zeke, battle, mission complete, over, Metal Gear Solid, apostrophe, no, it's not an apostrophe, what are the two dots, Except, no, yeah, apostrophe maybe, I, fuck it, uh, Metal Gear Solid, Peace Walker, no damage, and with commentary, I'll see you all then. We will forsake our countries. We will leave our motherlands behind us and become one with this earth. We have no nation, no philosophy, no ideology. We go where we're needed, 
fighting not for country, not for government, but for ourselves. We need no reason to fight. We fight because we are needed. We will be the deterrent for those with no other recourse. We are soldiers without borders, our purpose defined by the era we live in. We will sometimes have to sell ourselves and services. If the times demand it, we'll be revolutionaries, criminals, terrorists. And yes, we may all be headed straight to hell. But what better place for us than this? It is our only home. Our 